Tuesday, April 20th. I think that's the 30th. Wednesday, May 1st. If you're on the East Coast, across the pond, or down under, and this, my friends, is Spaced Out Radio. Hope you had a great day and night. I am your host, Dave Scott, broadcasting to you live from the Great White North, on top of the mountains of Central British Columbia, right here at SOR headquarters. We welcome you to tonight's show, including Deep Talk Radio and Revolution Radio. If you want to take a listen to our archives, they are free at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, currently under construction, but boy, are we going to make it gorgeous for you to check out very, very soon. Tonight's show is brought to you by the YouTube channel in Suho. Sebastian Martin brings high quality messages to the masses. Head to our website, click on the in Suho banner, and subscribe today. Every couple of months, we are joined by award-winning author and movie producer Ian Holt from the great city of New York. Ian comes in and hangs out, talks with us about a menagerie of topics from New York Yankees baseball, because we're both fans, to his favorite horror movies and the paranormal and UFOs. The co-author of the sequel to Bram Stoker's Dracula, Ian lives a passion in the arts and to help keep his fiction in his reality. Yeah. As weird as that sounds, it's so true. Then at the bottom of hour number three, I will bring you the SOR Newswire, brought to you by Paranoia Magazine. Mr. Ian Holt, how you doing, my friend? Back again. Great to be here. 24 days, buddy. 24 days until we are back on the air with you for the celebratory birthday show. And you will be joining us. But I'm going to guarantee this year there will be no... One chip challenge. No one chip no, challenge. No more hot peppers. No more hot peppers. And like you know, like Rob Thomas says on his new album, we're, we're going to be one less day from dying young. <laughs> it was just well, a pleasant thought. My friend, I can tell you this. So for our listeners who are new, because we've gained a lot of new listeners over the last year. Last year during our birthday show, because Ian and I celebrate. Our birthday's the same day. We're a year apart. Ian's a, a little bit older, a little bit wiser. I got the looks of May 24th. He's a 72 edition. I'm a 73 edition. And and last year, Catherine, our social media guru, she decided that she wanted to get us a special present. Well, me a special present, which was the Pocky One Chip Challenge. Now, for those of you who like spicy food, it hurt, man. It hurt real bad. This was, it was 1.9 million Scoville units. And then you had to sit there and take the pain for five minutes. Yeah. I thought it you hurt. Die. I thought we were going to be talking to your ghost. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it was very possible. It was very possible when, when my glasses started hurting on my head, my earbuds i had to rip them out of my ears because my ears were sore and my neck and shoulders went completely numb completely numb and you, didn't re- you didn't do your research because you had water to drink and the only thing that takes away the hot is milk well Not no water. i didn't no they didn't allow the rules were you could not drink anything for five minutes And Bazooka Joe was right beside me, and he had brought over a four-gallon jug of, or a gallon jug, I don't know, what four-liter jug, one gallon, of chocolate milk, because I hate regular milk. And I buried, I I drank three-quarters of that jug. So imagine. (laughs) You left. You had to walk out. You were like, I'm gone. You just you just ran out of there. I had to. I had no choice, Ian. I literally oh. once once the five minutes were up, and I downed a. I, I literally felt like a dog because I had my tongue sticking out of my mouth, and I had it dipped in the chocolate milk to try and cool it down. And you can't breathe in because it breathes all of the particles down your throat, the burning particles from this chip. So I literally said, you know, you and Amy were on the air, and you guys were chatting away, and I just said, I'm done. I, and I had to go to the to the sink in my bathroom, and I put the coldest water on possible, 
and I literally just left left my mouth uh, underneath that tap for about three four minutes. It was terrible, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> and I, you know, we didn't. You know, we're half laughing and half help and part feeling sorry for you. We didn't know what to do. Amy and I were like, you know, are you dying. What's going on? Well, you know what? It, it was all good. We survived. We survived, but I am not doing anything stupid this year. I I, I have decided and you did that. It, though. You did it challenge, so you know, power to you, man. You did it. Oh, I was brave. I'm not going to lie. I was brave, and I'm very happy about that. Very happy about it. Nonetheless, my friend, let's let our audience who may not be familiar with you learn a little bit about you. You are the co-author of Bram Stoker's Dracula. You won numerous awards for that. You're in the movie industry. Your whole life has been surrounded by entertainment. Let us know. Well, um, I uh, I started out uh, writing horror films, and um, I uh, traveled to Romania in 95. Um, I got the rights to... Um, from uh, Radu Ferescu and Ray McNally, the uh, Fulbright scholars who uh, did the archaeological research on Dracula. They uncovered his grave, supposedly his grave. It was empty, which is really weird. And there were the bones of a jackal in the grave, which is very similar to, for all of you who have seen The Omen. Um, but uh, it was uh, like this jackal in the grave, and they found a brooch from Dracula, and they they did the re- they found his castle and and excavated there and all of that, and they wrote the book in search of Dracula, which was a big bestseller in '73, and I got the rights to it, and they invited me to Romania in '95 for the first World Dracula Congress, and I joined them on their research at all the Dracula sites, his palace in Tukovishte and his castle in Ponari, and um, we uh, its grave site on Snagov Island, and. Uh, which is, by the way, which is really weird. Um, Michael Jackson had gotten involved with Dracula. I was always uh, obsessed with it. And he built a mansion overlooking Snagov Island on the lake over uh, the Snagov Monastery. And that's where he, he helped all the Romanian children that were living in the street. He brought them there to live, and they had dorm rooms there and everything. and gave all these kids homes. And it's this big mansion that overlooks which is just like everything else in his life, filled with mystery and weirdness. But um, uh, so we traveled to all the sites, and I met uh, members of the Stoker family. And through a couple of years of working with them, I met Dacre Stoker, uh, who's Brahms' great-grandnephew, and we wrote the official sequel um, to uh, Dracula, Brahms Stoker's Dracula, um, called Dracula the Undead. And uh, from there, I've gone on episode 50. I got my, uh, I, if you've ever seen Ghost Hunters or any of these ghost hunting shows, it's episode 50 is the ghost hunters get their butt kicked by the ghosts. It's a horror movie. And um, I'm doing now, um, just finished, like, like last time, if you were listening, um, we were editing. So I'd been up for like three days straight. <laughs> um, we Our new horror film, Death Metal, um, we've had, we had uh, the writer-director, that I produced, I produced Death Metal. Um, the writer-director was on Mike Kuchiak, one of our shows. Um, and uh, that's going to be at the festivals coming up this year. And uh, we're going into production on uh, on the uh, on Unhinged with Mickey Rourke um, and uh, another horror movie. And I'm doing my first venture into non-horror with a uh, documentary and film on the early days of Public Enemy and when they were known as Spectrum, Spectrum City. And uh, I've got a new project where I'm very excited. On Monday, they're flying in from Liverpool, um, George Harrison and um, from the Beatles um, and uh, John Lennon's girlfriends in high school. They were the head of the, of the Beatles fan club, and we've got the rights to their story. Um, and uh, we're going to make a movie about the early days of the Beatles, how they formed. And it's, it's not anything that you would imagine. I mean, they were the original grunge band. Who knew? I mean, they had long hair and beards and, you know, leather jackets and torn jeans and boots. And, you know, they, um, they were not like 
and this was in high school. They were not like anything that you, what we saw later when they had the suits and the mop tops and all of that. So I, you know, I became obsessed with the story. So I'm really looking forward to that. So that's pretty exciting. So I'm going to do my first non-horror stuff. So I hope all you horror fans out there will follow us to the Beatles story. It's called uh, uh, The Boys Next Door. And uh, we'll be, the next year or so, getting started with production on that. So I'm, I'm really excited about that. <laughs> you know, um, it's not, you know, it's funny. It's like all these years I've been doing horror. And um, to actually work on something non-horror is, uh, is kind of scary new territory, you know. I'm taking risks in my old age. I'm... Uh, like uh, death metal we're taking to the festivals, you know, even though we have a distribution deal, we're taking, we're taking it to the festival because we've never done it, you know? Um, so I figured why not do something different? Well, I do have to ask you, getting back to the Beatles thing, because this is the first I'm hearing about this. That sounds like an intriguing story. Do you buy the whole conspiracy theory around Paul is dead? Uh, I, I not really no. <laughs> um, I mean, I may I may have been more open to it before talking with um, with their girlfriends, their ex girlfriends. Of course, they didn't marry these girls. They were they were the fan club leaders. But it is interesting that um, they they kind of they they kind of laugh about the helter skelter you know the record played backwards and all that stuff i mean because and it's only because they knew them and they were so not into any of that you know they were about the straightest even though they were all grungy they were still the straightest arrows you could possibly imagine for a rock band i mean they did dabble with drugs and when they went to hamburg um uh and you know george harrison supposedly more than the others um but, I mean, I'm finding out such interesting things. Like, George Harrison was always called the Quiet Beetle. The truth is, he had um, uh, laryngitis when he came to America for the Ed Sullivan show, and they told him to rest his vocal cords, so he didn't speak. So everyone thought he was the quiet one. The real quiet one was John Lennon. So there's all these myths surrounding them, and as I'm talking to these women... I'm finding out so many things is myth. So I'm kind of right now a little less believing in, in any of that stuff because as they tell it, they're so like, they're so down to earth and normal that I find any of that hard to believe. There's still the conspiracy out there. There's a bunch of people out there who still believe that Paul McCartney is not Paul McCartney at all. And, you know, I don't believe that theory. I think it's I think it's a little too far fetched. I can see where they're going uh, with their points. I don't agree with it. But that's just my opinion. I could be completely wrong when you do something like that and you do a series like that. Do you bring up those types of topics in order to try and uh, in order to try and, you know, quell the fallacy from the fact? No, I mean, you know, the story is set, you know, at a time and a place. So we focus on, you know, their experiences with them. Like what an interesting fact is they only, they were a cover band and they were writing stuff, but when they performed at this place called the cave, which was a former factory that was bombed out during the war and uh, they played there and it was no, they didn't serve alcohol so kids could get in. And that's how the teenagers got involved and these girls became obsessive fans. But when Decca Records found them, they wanted to do original music and Decca wanted them to do covers. So their first, you know, recording studio session was all covers. And even their first release was covers. These girls went to the local record store and that, and like, got everyone in Liverpool to buy the record and it got so popular that the son of the owners of the, of the, of the record store was the guy that, you know, uh, that became their manager and figured out to get them to do original work and brought them to Hamburg to find a new sound. So, I mean, you know, you find out all these things about them and 
you know, you, you focus on that. The, the crazy stuff um, or the uh, conspiratorial stuff is stuff we bring up in the interview session, sort of like a, a break. You know, it's like, well, what do you think about this? You know, what do you think about Paul is Dead? What do you think about, you know, the album being played backwards and the connection to Helter Skelter and, and Manson and all these things? Uh, you know, and, and, you know, they kind of laugh when you bring it up. You know, because, again, these are, you know, I guess because rock and, rock and roll music was banned in England. Um, and uh, there's a, a sea fort off shore 12 miles offshore which was a uh anti-aircraft battalion um during the war and it's offshore off the entrance to the thames river so they were trying the 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 nazi bombers would find the thames and follow the thames up into london because they came and attacked at night during the blitz so this anti-aircraft fort, you know after the war in the 60s was just rotting out there in the middle of the ocean and kids because it was outside the law limits of England, went up there and started pirate radio. And that's how the Beatles got played on, on radio. All the kids were listening to pirate radio because it was pirate radio because it was the only place to hear American rock and roll because it was banned by the BBC because, you know, made kids sway their hips. So it was called the devil's music. And that, interestingly enough, goes back you know, it's based on the blues, which was created by Robert Johnson, who wrote the song Crossroads about selling his soul to the devil and hellhounds on his tail, that he would have 10 years of success. And he died at 27. And it's very interesting that, you know, the, the 27 Club, which includes Janis Joplin and Hendrix and Morrison and all these guys, but it seems to be this connection between rock and roll music and the so-called devil. Now, there's only one picture of Robert Johnson. And any of you out there want to take a look, go to Wikipedia, look, put in Robert Johnson, and the picture comes up. And when you look at it, facing the picture over his right shoulder, yes. is, looks like a devil, a demon in the picture. And, yes, it does. You know, it goes back to the devil music, which is why the Beatles which became this big rock and roll band gets connected. And of course the tragedy of Manson, it, it creates this aura around them because of the history of rock and roll and it was banned on the BBC. So this whole history of banning rock music because it's the devil's music and, you know, like Elvis's hips were swaying too much and it was, you know, creating sexual monsters out of the kids and that all of that, I think all plays into where these stories come from. You know, like everything else, it has a basis in fact, and it goes all the way back to Robert Johnson and the blues. I do have to ask you about that, though, because as we got about four minutes left before we go to break here, Ian Holt is our guest tonight. Ian, in regards to Robert Johnson, do you buy the whole sell your soul to the devil? Yes. I'm not saying that there's a devil, I mean, and all of that, you know, we have tangential evidence of it, but I believe he believed it, you know, and it's, it's documented fact that he said he had 10 years to live and he lived his life full out. Now, was he just, you know, uh, I mean, he created a new music. He wrote a certain number of songs that um, revolutionized modern music and created modern music. But he said, you know, he was hellhounds on his tail that, that Cerberus was coming for him. And, um, so it, I definitely believe that he believed it, you know, um, and, you know, having been down in new Orleans and, and been to Algiers, you know, like, again, this is another myth. Like everyone knows voodoo, right? from, you know, the zombies and all the stuff with voodoo, but actually voodoo is the positive magic. It's hoodoo magic. And we never do have any movies about hoodoo. It's always voodoo because it's the name everybody knows. Not many people know hoodoo, but if you're out in Louisiana and in New Orleans, outside of New Orleans is a place called Algiers, and that's the home of hoodoo. And that's supposedly where the crossroads actually are. So, I mean, if he believed, you know... Voodoo comes from a mishmash of Catholicism and, and the saints 
and the old African slave religions, pagan religions from Africa. And um, hoodoo is the evil version of it. So if you're a believer, you know, I've been down there. I, I've been to a voodoo ritual. I was supposedly possessed for the dance by Baron Samity. Um, it was a pretty exciting night. But, at, you know, I don't know if it was the, the, the wine and the, and the smoke and, the, and the, the whole, I can't, you know, I really don't remember. I mean, I, I was told I was dancing and doing all this stuff, so supposedly I had taken on Samity. But, I mean, that's the essence of voodoo. The, the uh, mamas live inside you and through you, and you give them your body as a sign of, uh, uh, of uh, worship. And then they, they slaughter a, a lamb and a chicken, and, you know, and, and, and everyone partakes of the lamb. They, they cook it, and everyone eats it after the ceremony. So it's very interesting. But for those people that believe in voodoo and the religion, and I would assume with hoodoo too, it's very real. So for Johnson to go down to this place, supposedly where Legba or the devil is, and to bury the chicken bones, whatever he's supposed to do for the ritual, I mean, he may have believed it. So he lived his life, like, doing whatever he wanted to do, drugs and alcohol and all this stuff, women, you know, and he could have killed him at 27. You know, it just so happens that it was almost 10 years to the day, and that could be a coincidence. But he believed you know, that this was coming. And if you believe the devil's coming after you after 10 years, you know, you might have nightmares about Cerberus coming after you, hellhound, right? So, I mean, he definitely believed it. So in that sense, yes, I believe it. If it's really true, I don't know, you know? I mean, there's a lot of cases of people selling their souls to the devil and like everything else, if you... There's some root to all the root root of truth in all you know myth. I hear you there. We're going to continue down that road because that's a path we've never gone. Because there's a number of musicians who believe they've sold their soul to the devil. Rolling Stones being one of them. We'll get into more of that along with the passing of Lorraine Warren. I know Ian has some thoughts on that. Paranormal with Ian Holt. Coming up more right after the break on Spaced Out Radio. Heading to Vancouver and looking for a night on the town? The Moose Vancouver is the bar that never stops rocking until 2 a.m. every night. The Moose has great food with everything on the menu from $6.95 to $8.95. Fantastic, vibrant staff and rock and roll that will bring you back to when the music was real, the hair was long, and the guitars were rocking. Get your party on at the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. 
You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is watching. Coming up this September 21st and 22nd, all UFO eyes will be focused on Toronto for the fourth annual Alien Cosmic Expo. Come listen to some of the biggest names and experiencers in ufology. Travis Walton, Paul Hellyer, Richard Dolan, Paula Harris, Grant Cameron, Randy Kramer, and Spaced Out Radio's own Dave Scott. Tickets are on sale now at aliencosmicexpo.com. Are you tired of being blocked, shadow banned, or placed in jail for simply posting your thoughts on social media? Social Media Freedom can take care of that for you. Social Media Freedom is the newest and one of the best free new apps that allows you the freedom to post what you want, when you want. It takes seconds to download from your app store. Come join the tribe at Social Media Freedom. It's time to set yourself free. A timepiece is a reflection of who you are. And what better way to show off the real you than with an escape watch? Escape is a lifestyle brand accessorizing your days and nights. Choose to escape and create the life of discovery that you deserve. Dream, play, unite with your own personalized escape watch. Head to escapewatches.com. There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. Did you know Spaced Out Radio runs seven days a week? Hi there, this is Tessa Nicole Thomas, and I'm here to take you on a paranormal journey each Saturday and Sunday night. Why change the station when you have it all right here? Together, we'll hang out and share some strange and scary stories. And don't forget, we have Psychic Sundays as well, so come tune in Spaced Out Weekend. We get going at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com, where we own the night. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. Come get spooked at the 4th Annual Forest Moon Paracon in Cedar Woolley, Washington, Saturday, September 28th. UFOs, ghosts, aliens, Bigfoot. Speakers include Mike Morin and Jason Jordan, R. Keith Andrews, and Dave Scott from Spaced Out Radio, and so much more. There will be workshops and a VIP roundtable. Get early bird tickets now at fmparacon.com. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. We're bringing scientific thought to the paranormal. Hi there, this is Spaced Out Radio scientist Chris Cogswell. Join me, Chris Zuger, and Dave Scott the second Wednesday of every month where we break down the who from the woo when it comes to everything paranormal. We'll investigate and try to bring sensible answers to those straight and sometimes outlandish questions people have. Hey, not everything has an answer, but we'll do our best. Listen in to Reality Paranormal only on Spaced Out Radio. Coming soon to our website, spacedoutradio.com, is the SOR Space Travelers Club. For just five bucks a month, you can get into a private area on our site where you can hang with other listeners in our chat room, post in our forum, and check out a bunch of exclusive content and store that won't be found anywhere else, including a nightly after show party with Dave. It's going to be the best five dollars a month you're going to spend. The SOR Space Travelers, only at spacedoutradio.com. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. 
The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Back to the second half hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters right here in the frozen Canadian tundra. Reminder to all of you, if you miss part of this show or others, you can always go to our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio for our archives. They are free for you. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. We've got a brand new website coming in just a couple of weeks' time, we are on the timeline. We are going to get that launched to make it nice and gorgeous and easy and sexy for you to use. So there you go. It's going to be a lot of fun. Mr. Ian Holt is our guest tonight. He is the co-author to the sequel to Bram Stoker's Dracula. He's also a movie director, producer, everything that goes along with entertainment. Ian dabbles in it. Ian, welcome back to the show. Thank you, sir. Always love having you on. Your next appearance on this show will be our birthday night, May 24th, in 24 days from now. It's going to be a good, good time. But, Ian, right before the break, we were talking about musicians who sell their soul to the devil. There has always been rumors, and I don't know how true they are, that the Rolling Stones have to keep touring and keep putting out music because... In their quest for fame early on in the 60s, they allegedly sold their souls to the devil for fame and fortune. What do you know about that? Well, um, actually, because of the Beatles story, I know a lot more than I did a few months ago. Um, the uh, the, the uh, pirate radio station that I told you about would only play American music. The first band homegrown because they the home first homegrown british band that got played on 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 the pirate radio station in england was the beatles and if it wasn't for the beatles the rolling stones would never have been played on the pirate radio and they never would have probably been found so it one really they really more tied together than we than i even knew um so i mean it's if you believe that they sold their soul to the devil, it's almost like this, the Beatles had to happen. And if you believe any of the stories about the Beatles, then, you, you know, it's almost like one caused the other. And, it's all, you, you know, you, there's a connection there. And I'll tell you quick my two uh, Rolling Stones story, because what you may not know is that they tour and do, like, pop-up shows. Um, I grew up on Long Island, and a lot of my friends were musicians. Uh, including Mike Portnoy, who plays with um, Bumblefoot now, a drummer. And drummer. Uh, uh, yeah, amazing. And some of them, uh, my friends, had Steve Vai as their guitar teacher because she's from Mineola and so is Joe Satriani. So my friend Ira was taking lessons from Steve. And uh, he calls me up one night in my dorm room in college and says, you got to come to the Village Vanguard, like right now. And I'm like, well, it was the middle of the night. I had early class the next morning. And he's like, no, get just get over here now. And I'm like, why? What's going on? And it was a, a pop-up show at the Village Vanguard. I sat in the first row at a table. The place was empty. The Rolling Stones were in town for um, their concert at the Garden. And uh, after, the sh after the concert, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, my God, the Rolling Stones lead singer, um, Mick Jagger, Mick Jagger, with Satriani and plays an impromptu set of old blues and rock and roll songs at the Vanguard. I was right up front. I got to meet him, everything. So they, there, there may be some because they, I mean, to do a show at the Garden and then at like in the middle of the night to show up at the Vanguard and do another show, they played like a whole set, you know, with Joe, with Joe Satch, and it was. It was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen because they had no set playlist. Every after every song, they're like, "What do you want to play next?" And you know, then they just jammed out for a while. And 
it was amazing. He was making up lyrics as he went, you know? And, uh, and then I actually almost, I, I, I almost killed Keith Richards. It's How did you do that? I was, still, I was walking with uh, my then girlfriend uh, from my dorm. I was at my, living at my fraternity then at NYU, and it was right by Tower. We were going into Tower Records, and you know there was always a rush of people on that corner there because one time people used to buy things called records and CDs, <laughs> and it was packed. It was like a Saturday night, and I was talking. I wasn't looking where I was going as I'm crossing the street. And the lights changing, and we're kind of ru- running, and I didn't see him. I hit this guy, and he went flying. I mean, literally, I hit him so hard, he went like up in the air. He was so light and tiny, this little old guy, and he hit the ground. He hit his head, and his eyes were like, oh, I was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. And then I realized I just threw Keith Richards into the street uh, in front of oncoming traffic. So I grab him. And the person he's walking with grabs, and we pick him up, and we, you know, he, he, I guess he was a little dazed, and we brought, or that's maybe where he is normally. I don't know. And we walked him to the corner. We're like, "Are you all right?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm fine. No problem." I said, "I'm so sorry." He goes, "No, it was my fault. I wasn't looking." And I'm like, "No, I'm. It's my fault." You know, and he had a bump on his head and it was bleeding, and he was like, "No, no worries, mate. No worries." You know, and he was, and he was like, you know, thank you for helping me. And I was like, no, I'm so sorry, I hit you. I thought I killed him. I really, I hit him so hard. And I, I didn't mean to, but um, that was that was a wild night. I just said, uh, I almost killed Keith Richards. Dude, he, Keith Richards is indestructible. There is nothing on this planet, neither God nor devil, that could take Keith Richards' soul. We got to no, start, I mean, and, we'll, I, and I'm going to copy we'll a saying that. here. I'm going to copy a saying here, but we really got to start, you know, preparing our children and grandchildren for the world we are going to leave Keith Richards in the future. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, the thing is, he's tiny and like frail, you know, he's, he's so light and small. I would, you know, uh, you know, you think, you know, it's funny, you see these people and you, in your head, you imagine them like larger than life, but he was such a tiny guy, you know? And very, very friendly. He was very nice. I mean, he could have been a real jerk about it because I really did clock him by accident. But he was so nice. So, you know, you don't have to be evil to sell your soul to the devil, I guess. And look, there's Jimmy Page, you know, stories about him and Black Magic and buying house to Crowley's house. You know, I mean, there's a lot of stories like that. I mean, there's, Joe, Bonam- there's, you know, Joe Bonamassa talks about Jimmy Page and the black magic and everything that goes along with that. You know, he also says, Paige always got a kick out of these rumors and thought that, and even said, I don't really want to go on about my personal beliefs or involvement in magic, but you have to wonder. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you, you get caught up in it. Like I was made an honorary member of, uh, uh, Anton LaVey's, uh, uh, church of Satan and the satanic church. Another one made me a member when I wrote the book. You know, an honorary member. So, I mean, there's a documentary out about uh, the Church of Satan, which is more of a, a protest group than an actual um, uh, satanic church. I mean, they when they were trying to get, uh, you know, break church and state rules in this country, they wanted prayer in schools. The governor of Florida, they, they went and supported him in, in their devil outfits with the horns and the robes. Because they wanted to worship Satan in school, <laughs> the children worship Satan in school, and that helped defeat the bill. So I mean, they're more left activists than they are real Satanists. But Levey's church, I mean, Levey made it all up, all the rituals and everything. But it's a real church of Satan. They actually worship Satan, and it's interesting because, you know, the the Kabbalah and the Old Testament, Satan isn't really evil. He's not like the devil that we know from the Exorcist. I mean, that came about later, and if you read the versions of the story that's in uh, H- Hindu uh, Mahabharata, you know, the, the, war in, the war of the two aliens that gave us not one wanted to free us from being slaves, that, you know, we, we are with the, um, that we were created as a slave race, and Satan tried to fight to free us, because there's a Satan character in the Hindu text, 
So it's more like, you know, we were naked, dumb, you know, slaves in the Garden of Eden. We did whatever God said. And, we, and then Satan gave us the tree of knowledge, either the tree of knowledge or Eve did. And all of a sudden, you know, we had free will and free choice. So is free will and free choice really bad? I mean, it's an interesting discussion, you know. Um, and interestingly enough, I was talking on, well, typing on Facebook with uh, a gentleman um, from the South who was evangelical. And he said, you know, I, ha I shouldn't be a Democrat. I should be a Republican and find God because uh, Democrats believe in free choice and, and, and free will. And that is, there is no free choice and free will. It only is to follow the word of God. And, I, you know, my first question to him was, well, what do you do about, you know, if you adulterers should be stoned? And, you know, we have all this anxiety about Sharia law from Muslims. And, and you know, the, the you know, we're always, the, the Republicans are always afraid of Sharia law and, you know, warning against it. Yet the, the, the New Testament has just as many crazy, you know, punishments and things for, I mean, even pork can get you killed. So, I mean... It's interesting that, you know, that free will is it really, you know, we pride ourselves on as a, as a race, yet it comes from Satan or Sisyphus or, you know, uh, Prometheus, you know, it's all, it's all the same story told different ways, but in some stories, the devil is, you know, the bad guy and other stories, you know, saying he's the bad guy and other stories, he's, he's like the hero who saved us from being slaves. So, I mean, you know, you know, if you read, um, the, uh, uh cuneiform text from Mesopotamia, I mean, the Anunnaki, um, came here to create a slave race to, to mine for gold because they were two, they were giants. Uh, and they, and we were made, which is why we have junk DNA, why we have, uh, you know, if you believe they were aliens, the Anunnaki, like the text say, it came from the stars. I mean, you, you, you know, we were a slave race created to mine gold. I mean, it could be one of the reasons why, you know, our brains grew faster. I mean, it takes millions of years for evolution. And it seems from the, re or the historical record that our evolution came about 250,000 years, which is pretty incredible. And it could be why, you know, the, the women, uh, female's birth canal isn't big enough to have children. So that's why our, our skulls aren't fully formed because it could squeeze together and we can come out of the birth canal. So it, you're it's going off like on a, a major birth... tangent here, man, major tangent. I know it's all connected. I mean, all these stories are so connected. I mean, it, it's hard to, you know, to say what's what anymore, because if you look at it one way, everything may, if you look at the ancient alien theory and Satan and, and what Satan is, if it, you follow the Hindi text, it's all connected. It's a perfect story that makes sense. When you look at the science, what we tell us in science class, it's all disjointed and there's big gaps in the story. So for the ancient alien theory, everything makes sense. And so it's interesting, you know, how we look at Satan, you know, is he, when he says you sell your soul, do we really believe he's taking your soul or is, you know, is, is he rewarding his worshipers? I mean, if you watch American gods, the more you worship the old gods, the more they, they reward you. Right. So what, what is the real story? I mean, your guess is as good as mine. Well, you know what? We'll see. The only litmus test to whether or not musicians sold their soul to the devil is to see how long Keith Richards lives. That's the only thing we can do. It's all we got. That's our litmus test. That's our proof right there. That's true. He'll probably live forever. You know, now that, now, now, so. you know, now, right. You know, now I'll die tomorrow, God forbid, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, we, we, we say that with all due politeness and respect. Ian Holt yeah. is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Ian, I want to shift gears to the paranormal here as we got about six and a half minutes before we need to go to break at the top of the hour. Last week, passing of a paranormal legend in Lorraine Warren. 
you oh my- have talked about her very much on this show over the years, and yeah. and you were just a, a big fan. Did you ever get to meet her? I've met her a few times. I was friendly with her. In fact, I first met her when I was 50 years old. Um, when um, the Amityville Horror book came out, um, my mom read it to me because I was sick, and she wanted to read a children's book. And I was like, no, I want the Amityville Horror. So she read the Amityville Horror to me, and it just so happened that that was the week in our local paper here on Long Island, Newsday, that she was doing the investigation ordained by the church into the house and whatever evil force had lived there. Now, if you're watching the movies, the nun is a representation of the demon that she's been fighting her whole life. And um, she went to uh, Amityville Horror House, which was the first, one of the first highly uh, teched out for the time investigations where they had motion sensors and cameras and they caught the ghost, the famous ghost boy pick. If you, if you're at your computer, you can go online and look up the Amityville Horror ghost boy pick. The Amityville Horror, it really started with the DeFeo family years before the Lutz family moved in. And uh, DeFeo murdered his entire family. And the Ghost Boy pick, there's a split pick on, on Google of the Ghost Boy and the, and the actual DeFeo, the youngest DeFeo child. And it's the same kid. And his eyes are glowing and he's peeking out from behind the door. It's one of the creepiest photos I've ever seen. And it was in all the papers. So I asked my dad in the morning to drive me out to Amityville because the investigation was still going on. And I, she, I actually saw her and Ed show up at the house. And I ran out of the car and asked if I could join in the seance. <laughs> and I wanted to go in the house and be part of the investigation. And she says, oh, my God, it's too dangerous. You know, you can't do that. She was very polite and very nice. And then as I was researching episode 50, my cousin lives in Connecticut, and I went to her house. I found out where she lived, and I went to her house and knocked on the door. And she gave me a tour of her house. She was so polite and nice, and I told her who I was. And she she said she remembered me, but I don't know. And um, she introduced me to the real um, Annabelle, which is a, um, a Raggedy Ann doll. And she has a room full of demonic possessed artifacts um, in her basement. And um, she told me a story that um, I still to this day rocks my world. She was hired by the church to throw out the demon from the Amityville house. And the church, this is the Vatican, sent her a special cross with a shard of the true cross in it, the, the, the cross Jesus was crucified on in the back of the the silver cross. She showed it to me. And she used that to exercise the demon, which is in the movies, the nun. And she wasn't strong enough to send it out of our realm. That's the way I can describe it in a short way. And uh, it escaped. And that's the same demon that possessed the son of Sam. And the son of Sam murders were a result of her not being strong enough to exercise the demon. And that was his revenge. And then that demon, which you'll see in Conjuring 3, killed Ed and tried to kill her. So, I mean, that to me is the most incredible thing I've ever heard. And one of the things, when I heard that she had passed, she was 92, God bless her. I mean, she, you know, she, uh, I wonder, you know, what, what happens now? I mean, now that she's passed on, is this demon going to finally get to her? Uh, is she going to see Ed again? You know, there's, you know, you wonder about all these things because of who she was. I mean, she's one of the few, you know, Ed was a real demonologist or, you know, uh, you know, he worked for the Vatican, worked for the church. So I, I, I you know, it's, she was an amazing woman who helped so many people. You know, she was not a wealthy woman. She had a little house. She was, you know, she helped so many people that deal with hauntings and 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 in humans. I mean, she was like almost like a saint, and she was going to be a nun at one point. She saw the story in the nun how she, uh, you know, left the the. I guess she was a nun in training, and she left to be to 
to follow this path of exorcism and all of that. Uh, I mean, her passing, I mean, her wealth of knowledge and her ability to be a medium and connect with these ghosts. I mean, there's records of her, you know, finding these ghosts and then going into the historical record and actually documenting that this person lived or whatever and was able to prove over and over again that her psychic abilities were spot on. I mean, you know, I, I, I worked with her when I when I was on Paranormal State working with uh, Ryan um, when we investigated the um, um, uh, uh, the uh, West Virginia State Penitentiary and found the um, the uh, in the warden's apartment the pentagram, but she told us to go up there. I mean, she said there's something very evil in this place. And, you know, this was, it's interesting that in the museum at the, at the prison is a letter written on toilet paper from Charles Manson to the warden asking, he, he had the prisoners come up and, and do a Bible study in his apartment, but it wasn't Bible study. It was hidden behind his panel. Is a, it was a pentagram, and he was actually doing devil worship, which is why the wow. place is the most haunted place in Very the country. I have pictures on my Facebook page if you want to check it out. Definitely. And Ian, Nancy, Ian, I'm, I'm going to get you to hold on right there because we are going to step out at the top of the hour here for our break. Ian Holt is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. He comes in every couple of months, hang out with us, shoot the breeze. On the paranormal, we're going to continue with the passing of Lorraine Warren and more paranormal talk with Ian Holt in hour two. Come on. No. We're bringing scientific thought to the paranormal. Hi there. This is Spaced Out Radio scientist Chris Cogswell. Join me. Chris Zuger and Dave Scott, the second Wednesday of every month, where we break down the who from the woo when it comes to everything paranormal. We'll investigate and try to bring sensible answers to those straight and sometimes outlandish questions people have. Hey, not everything has an answer, but we'll do our best. Listen in to Reality Paranormal only on Spaced Out Radio. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. Did you know Spaced Out Radio runs seven days a week? Hi there, this is Tessa Nicole Thomas, and I'm here to take you on a paranormal journey each Saturday and Sunday night. Why change the station when you have it all right here? You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Coming soon to our website, spacedoutradio.com, is the SOR Space Travelers Club. For just five bucks a month, you can get into a private area on our site where you can hang with other listeners in our chat room, post in our forum, and check out a bunch of exclusive content and store that won't be found anywhere else including a nightly after-show party with Dave. It's going to be the best $5 a month you're going to spend. The SOR Space Troublers, only at spacedoutradio.com. Come get spooked at the 4th Annual Forest Moon Paracon in Cedar Woolley, Washington, Saturday, September 28th. UFOs, ghosts, aliens, Bigfoot. Speakers include Mike Morin and Jason Jordan, R. Keith Andrews, and Dave Scott from Spaced Out Radio, and so much more. There will be workshops and a VIP roundtable. Get early bird tickets now at fmparacon.com. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. 
SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website, including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. Coming up this September 21st and 22nd, all UFO eyes will be focused on Toronto for the 4th Annual Alien Cosmic Expo. Come listen to some of the biggest names and experiencers in ufology. Travis Walton, Paul Hellyer, Richard Dolan, Paula Harris, Grant Cameron, Randy Kramer, and Spaced Out Radio's own Dave Scott. Tickets are on sale now at aliencosmicexpo.com. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. On the first Tuesday of every month, I encourage you to come along for a journey with me, Geraldine Orozco, on The Spiritual You. Together, we will take a look at how to access the highest expression of yourself and change your life, consciousness, ET contact, health, and wellness. We can talk about it all. So come along for a spiritual ride with me, Geraldine Orozco, on The Spiritual You, only on Spaced Out Radio. Get your horns up with me on Spaced Out Radio. This is Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Come tune in to SOR where you can hear me rock out with Little Brother is Watching, the official theme song of Spaced Out Radio. And then come on over to Bumblefoot.com where you can find out about my tour schedule, my music, and everything else. Bumblefoot.com keeps you up to date on what I'm doing and the best way to stay in touch with my music and music camps. Sign up for my newsletter at Bumblefoot.com and remember, Little Brother is Watching. Come get spooked at the 4th Annual Forest Moon Paracon in Cedar Woolley, Washington, Saturday, September 28th. UFOs, ghosts, aliens, Bigfoot. Speakers include Mike Morin and Jason Jordan, R. Keith Andrews, and Dave Scott from Spaced Out Radio, and so much more. There will be workshops and a VIP roundtable. Get early bird tickets now at fmparacon.com. Heading to Vancouver and looking for a night on the town? The Moose Vancouver is the bar that never stops rocking until 2 a.m. every night. The Moose has great food with everything on the menu from $6.95 to $8.95. Fantastic, vibrant staff and rock and roll that will bring you back to when the music was real, the hair was long, and the guitars were rocking. Get your party on at the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Canada's largest UFO conference is ready to roll in Toronto this September 21st and 22nd at the Alien Cosmic Expo. This year is about the experience. Listen to the stories of Dave Scott, Travis Walton, Paula Harris, Grant Cameron, Ryan Stacey, Richard Dolan, Leslie Mitchell-Clark, and more. Get your tickets now at aliencosmicexpo.com. Looking for the stories of the strange and weird that you will find hard to find anywhere else? Check out the SOR Newswire on our website. Our writers, led by Captain Shirk, are scouring the world for the oddest and most bizarre stories we can find. Everything from weird crime to suspenseful and paranormal. We're working hard for you to bring you the most intriguing news of your day. Check out the SOR Newswire at spacedoutradio.com today. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter 
at Spaced Out Radio and on Facebook's Spaced Out Radio Show. Welcome back to hour number two of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for joining us wherever you may be on this great planet. Tomorrow night on the show, Tom Whitmore joins us. We're going to talk about the secrets of Majestic 12, 906 Pacific, 1206 AM Eastern at spacedoutradio.com. Hi to everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates, KDUN AM 1030 in Reedsport, Oregon, UPRN 107.7 FM in New Orleans, KZFX 93.7 FM in Ridgecrest, California, and in Noonan, Georgia, WQEE 99.1 FM. On the digital side, hi to everyone listening in on Revolution Radio and Deep Talk Radio. Remember, you can check out all of our archives for free at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do old Davey the favor hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. And Fractuous, and Fractuous is your password. Make sure you use it wisely, Space Travelers, as the Clam sets a password each and every night right here on the mighty SOR. Our website, currently under construction, is spacedoutradio.com. Usually we have a plethora of features for you, but we're rebuilding right now. Stay tuned. We'll be relaunching our website in a couple of weeks. Ian Holt is our guest tonight. He comes in every couple of months to talk everything from horror to music to suspense and everything in between. He is the co-author of Bram Stoker's Dracula Part 2, if we could call it that. I don't see what the problem is, but you can also call it the sequel. Ian, welcome back to the show. Thank you, sir. The name of the novel is Dracula the Undead. I love it. Absolutely love it. My friend, right before the break, we were talking about Lorraine Warren passing away and the influence and impact that she had on the paranormal. There were a lot of critics to her and Ed Warren saying that they were fear mongers, that they did it for their own popularity and to pad their own pocketbooks. Many people believe that they faked a plethora of evidence out there. And... It, I, you know, to be honest with you, I was a little disappointed in a lot of the paranormal crowd at how they reacted to her death because there were a lot of very rude comments, in my opinion. I never met Lorraine Warren, never talked to her. We've never had her on this show. But at some point, you have to pay homage, do you not, to the person who really put the paranormal on the front burner for a lot of people. I think she was very, very brave in the fact that at a time when this subject was, I mean, the ridicule of the Lutz family, I mean, I know some of them, the children, and what they've gone through, um, you know, and of course, their mother recanting the story and you know, which was done just to get everyone off her back and figure she just recanted, so left her alone. She was sorry. You know, they didn't make much money. Lorraine didn't have much money. She didn't do this for money. And as I was saying before the break, you know, any skeptic out there will have to contend with me because she told me what we were entering dangerous territory. She was worried about Ryan from Paranormal State that, you know, he had conflicts with the church because he was gay. He is gay. Um, and uh, it was always a point of, of personal uh, trouble with him, you know, uh, trying to reconcile. And he was denied by the church an exorcism of a demonic that was haunting this family. And Lorraine tried to warn him not, in fact, she left the investigation because uh, he was so worried about the children, Ryan, that he decided to try the exorcism himself. And not being, even though he was in the, he was studying to be a priest at one time and left because he was gay, um, he, he did the exorcism himself and that demon has followed him and all his troubles, you know, the, the heroin and, you know, all the things going on with him, he's in jail now. Um, is because of this demon, supposedly, and Lorraine tried to warn him. So that was one. The second time was she warned me to be very careful when I was doing working with Ryan on the investigation of 
the um, uh, West Virginia State Penitentiary because we the, the warden was doing demon worship. And as I was saying before the break, Charles Manson wrote on toilet paper a letter to the warden asking to join his Bible study. So he would bring prisoners up to the his house where he, there's an apartment in the prison where he had this behind a secret wall that we found and the pictures are on my Facebook page of, of a pentagram. And he was actually doing devil worship, which is why the place is the most haunted, one of the most haunted sites in the country. And, um, she warned us about it. She told us that we were going to make a discovery. And, um, and it's one of my beliefs, you know, she told me I was on the right track that, that Ed Bugliosi, um, when he was prosecuting Manson, shied away from the paranormal because at that time it wasn't spoken about. And Lorraine was groundbreaking and open about all of it at a time when to me even talk about this, you were thought to be crazy or making it up or whatever. And, you know, she really opened the topic up because of that ghost boy pick from Amityville. And, you know, she may... You know, there are those skeptics that will always attack people that believe or are experiencers. And I think, you know, from my own experiences with her, she was a, a lovely woman. And I don't, I can't imagine anyone, you know, putting, I didn't, I only met Ed that once. When I met her again, he had already passed. So I, I can only talk about Lorraine. Um, she... She was the sweetest, nicest, most caring person. If there was ever a, a role model for a true Christian, it was Lorraine. I mean, she had such compassion for people and she did everything she could to help people that were in desperate, dangerous situations. And Ryan, you know, almost was, and Chip Coffee is another one. It was almost like, you know, she was his men, Ryan's mentor. I mean, he, he put his, his life on the line so many times to help people, even when the church didn't agree, you know, and that was part of the problem with Ryan was he was going to be her successor and, you know, him doing that exorcism, which was when one of the episodes of, of paranormal state really had the church break with him because he di didn't follow the orders. You know, he he was obsessed with helping people, and he got that from 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 uh, Lorraine. I almost said Elizabeth Warren. <laughs> um, so, I mean, from my experience with her, she was very truthful, very believable. I mean, the way she looked after the Lutz family, they're all, she's almost like a surrogate mom to them. Um, it's it's uh it's very hard when I hear those things about her and the way people feel about her. You know, some people. It, it's so it's such an antithesis to who she was and and you know i mean i mean even me as a little kid she was so nice to me that day you know and trying to protect me and not let me go into the house of course years later uh, i actually got into the house um i didn't listen to her <laughs> but i mean just from the the west uh, the west virginia state penitentiary investigation i mean she really I mean, everything she said came, came to pass. And, um, you know, uh, what I was saying before was, I guess I went off a little bit of a tangent, but I believe what Bugliosi didn't want to get into was that the LaBianca tape murders, with all the other stuff, was a satanic worship ritual. And a lot of people believe that Hitler was possessed by a demon. And that's why he was able to control people. And Manson was trying to possess, be possessed by that same demon to create his race war. Now, most people think Manson, and I discussed this with Lorraine, that Manson was, you know, trying to create a race war to kill all the black people. White people would kill all the black people. He actually wasn't. And even though he later became a white supremacist, in prison for protection. His real mission was to get black people to stand up and fight because he's for, for uh, civil liberties, because he believed that if they 
if they fought, then whites would fight back and they would kill each other. And then he would be able to rise up as the, as, and so it wasn't out of, he would rise up as a new leader, a spiritual leader like Hitler, <laughs> possessed by this demon. That's what I believe really happened. And Bugliosi never talked about it, never wrote about it, but he, quote unquote, exercised it from the prosecution because he didn't want to get into the satanic and paranormal aspects of the Manson family and the murders. And Lorraine is, was, you know, was very much um, a believer in that, that there was a lot more to the story than we know. Do you believe that there is some sort of demonic path that is going to continue now, considering Lorraine has now passed? And if so, who takes that on? Is it Ryan? Well, uh, Ryan. Ryan Buell? Is it John Zaffis? I mean, you know, her daughter now is in charge of all those demonic items, you know, and her daughter cares for them and protects them. I don't know who her successor is. I mean, the tragedy of Ryan Buell, um, I mean, it's proof in my eyes that the forces she was dealing with were beyond anything we could imagine. I mean, if her story is true that the Son of Sam murders were a revenge for the demon being cast out of the house and not being able to possess the Lutz family, I mean, it's, and that she exercised him and that she wasn't powerful enough to stop them, stop him or it, I mean, it's, is an inhuman or demon, whatever you want to call it, could have that power um, to create chaos. You know, and look, science is finding this stuff that kind of supports that idea. I mean, you know, we know this thing about dark matter. We don't know what it is, but there's more matter in the universe than, than, than we see or can see yet. So are these other dimensions? And is there, is there a hell dimension and a heaven dimension? You know, the Akashic record, where is that? Is that all in space in this dark matter? Because they find out that the, the galaxies are traveling faster and they should be, and there's not enough matter to hold them together. So they know there's dark matter out there, and, and so the theory is that this dark matter is these other universes that we can't see or other dimensions that we can't see. And in those dimensions, is there a Satan? Is there demon demonics? You know, in a science way, you know, we found, again, the proof of a soul that you can now, they are now experimenting with holding data in an electromagnetic field. Now, the brain is basically like a living computer. So if they can hold data, it can hold memories. So there's a possibility of scientifically proven soul. So, I mean, the more we, the more we investigate, which is always my big thing, you know, is to get science to stop looking at it like it's some freak show. That look into this stuff. But eventually, I mean, even the... Even in the Mahabharata, they talk about a mercury gold uh, gyroscope engine that's anti-gravity. They are now, they are, it's very small right now. They haven't been able to blow it up to a real-sized ship, but they are using magnets and electromagnetic energy and mercury. They're able to create an anti-gravity craft. This is basically exactly what the Mahabharata said. So where is this coming from? Science is proving more and more every day, even though they won't equate the two, that these things are real or can, could be real, and there's a basis in science for it. And Lorraine, you know, she came at it from, I guess you would call it a supernatural or paranormal point of view, but everything she says is being played out in what we're finding as we advance in science. And I, I can't. I, I, I think one day she's going to be remembered more than just for movies, you know, and the scary movies that we make. And that may be part of it, you know, the fact that she let her story be told in in horror movies, um, 
may be part of why people, you know, some people feel that she was out to make money and didn't believe her. Um, and I can tell you, she lived a very you know, modest existence. Her house is very small. It's, it's not, you know, filled with the, uh, you know, expensive things. She lived very modestly. Um, and she, she did a lot for people and charity and, and the church. And, you know, she lived, a as close as I can see to anyone who's ever lived a Christ-like life, you know? Um, I, I think she was a very brave woman who took on some of the most powerful forces in the universe, if it's true. You know, I gotta Rich ask, there's, there's a controversial paranormal investigator named Steve Huff out of Chicago, I believe who believes that it's his duty to try and connect with famous people on the other side shortly after we found out they have passed. He did this with Lorraine Warren, claims that he got a lot of stuff from her, including that she was back with Ed. She had reunited with him on the other side. And a a lot of people have a big issue with this including a good friend of yours and mine, Bill Hauser, who says hello. He's in the Spreaker chat room tonight. Hey, Huff, has been, Huff has been known to to fake evidence, and he's been caught numerous times, even though he still denies it. But I guess the point that I'm getting at is, you know, she was barely deceased, and here this guy is trying to connect with her on the other side. What do you think that is? Just propaganda for himself? Or do you think this well, is smart yeah. to try and do that? Look, if he could prove it, because it's celebrities, you'd probably get a lot more press. My view of it is, if you're going after celebrities, you're looking for press, because you're using their names, you know, and the, and it's kind of morbid. You're using their passing to self-aggrandize. But at the same time, I can understand why he would do that because if he could prove it, he would get the press that it would deserve. But to me, if you could talk to uh, celebrities that pass, then do the go for the gold ring. Find Houdini. Now, a few of those of you who don't know, Houdini was um, very much into exposing fake mediums because he was very in love with his mother. His mother passed. He went to mediums. And as a illusionist, he figured out how they did all their tricks, including Madame Zatska, who he he believed was a shark. Um, and they were at war, and he left behind a coded message that only his wife knew the, um, the key to the code. And he said if any medium could connect with him on the other side, he would give them the key to the code so they could decode the message. Now his wife has since passed, but the uh, code and the key is still under lock and key with uh, a law firm. And if this guy can connect with celebrities and connect with Houdini, get the code and prove it. That's what I say. If anyone can really do that, then, then get the code. It would be my, it's my challenge to my friendship coffee, who I, I like, um, and I believe, I mean, you know, I mean, if you watched Expedition Unknown with Josh Gates recently, um, he went to one of Chip's readings and he was there to record the reading and Chip looked at him and said something about a, uh, a Indian artifact or something and that's, that, that was given to someone after someone passed recently. And Josh was like shocked. He was stunned. If you watch the film, watch the show, I mean, he's, he, he, he like jumps back and that was Josh's aunt who had just passed and she worked with native Americans and had a store where she sold native American art and, uh, she bequeathed them in her will, a, um, uh, a spear. And this is what chip pulled out of the air. So I, my answer is why not, why not find Houdini? <laughs> you know, that's when someone finds it, I mean, that'll be the ultimate proof. I get that. And Absolutely Lorraine, get that. Go ahead. He never did readings of dead people and, and all of that. I mean, she was all about 
um, helping souls find their way, lost souls find their way into the light, helping people at haunted houses, especially poltergeists and then humans. She was about exercising demons who had possessed people and all of that. And she was basically an investigator for the church. That's how she made her money and her, her living. You know, all the other stuff, the books that she written, I mean, none of them were like incredible bestsellers. She didn't get rich off this, but it did lead to the movies being made. And I guess some people find that, you know, like a, um, a heretical, I guess. I, I, I really don't know. I, I, I didn't, you know, I didn't get any of those vibes from her. I mean, she was very real and down to earth. And I mean, the sweetest woman, <laughs> I mean, really, I mean, you know, some kid comes up to you when you're six years old and, the, and, and 40 years later knocks on your door and you open your whole house to him and, you know, spend the day with him. I mean, and talk about everything and, you know, just out of the blue, I mean, you know, and, and retain a friendship that lasted until she passed. I mean, it's pretty, she's, she was special. There was something about her when you sat with her. I don't know how to explain it, but we talk about when someone's on camera and they have that it factor, there's that larger yes. than life quality to her. That's yeah. the way she, you felt her. There was some kind of energy around her that when you were in her presence, you felt you were, you, you know, you, you, you really felt something, you know, and, and I, I can only equate it to when I went to Dracula's castle, like the air was heavy. It was, there's no animals, that, right. no birds, there's no nothing. So it, that's the opposite end. And there's another, there's the opposite end of that is what you felt with Lorraine Warren, this, this calming, you know, loving presence that she had. You felt like light coming off her. I mean, I, if, you know, I can only imagine if you did, you know, uh, uh, some pictures of her aura, what it would have looked like. But I would have liked to, have, I should have, I wish I could have done it while she was alive, do a thermal scan of her. Because I, I would imagine she had a very strong energy coming off her. Because she, she was really like such a peaceful, calming voice and never raised her voice, always very steady. You know, a wonderful woman, you know, a really good woman and she wasn't like she sounded she like dress fancy. yeah she didn't dress fancy she was very plain Christian woman and i i admired her very much ian we're gonna get you to hold on right there we're going to break here at the bottom of the hour ian holt is with us tonight author extraordinaire movie producer all-around good guy for a gemini we're going to continue with the paranormal talk as Ghost Hunters Television is coming back, and Ian's got a few words to say about that. More Spaced Out Radio right after this. Coming up this September 21st and 22nd, all UFO eyes will be focused on Toronto for the 4th Annual Alien Cosmic Expo. Come listen to some of the biggest names and experiencers in ufology. Travis Walton, Paul Hellyer, Richard Dolan, Paula Harris, Grant Cameron, Randy Kramer, and Spaced Out Radio's own Dave Scott. Tickets are on sale now at aliencosmicexpo.com. A timepiece is a reflection of who you are, and what better way to show off the real you than with an Escape watch? Escape is a lifestyle brand accessorizing your days and nights. Choose to escape and create the life of discovery that you deserve. Dream, play, unite with your own personalized Escape watch. Head to escapewatches.com. There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. Come get spooked at the 4th Annual Forest Moon Paracon in Cedar Woolley, Washington, Saturday, September 28th. UFOs, ghosts, aliens, Bigfoot. Speakers include Mike Morin and Jason Jordan, R. Keith Andrews, and Dave Scott from Spaced Out Radio, and so much more. There will be workshops and a VIP roundtable. Get early bird tickets now at fmparacon.com. Did you know Spaced Out Radio runs seven days a week? 
Hi there, this is Tessa Nicole Thomas, and I'm here to take you on a paranormal journey each Saturday and Sunday night. Why change the station when you have it all right here? Together, we'll hang out and share some strange and scary stories. And don't forget, we have Psychic Sundays as well, so come tune in Spaced Out Weekend. We get going at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com, where we own the night. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website, including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from Talk Stream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. We're bringing scientific thought to the paranormal. Hi there, this is Spaced Out Radio scientist Chris Cogswell. Join me, Chris Zuger, and Dave Scott the second Wednesday of every month, where we break down the who from the woo when it comes to everything paranormal. We'll investigate and try to bring sensible answers to those straight and sometimes outlandish questions people have. Hey, not everything has an answer, but we'll do our best. Listen in to Reality Paranormal only on Spaced Out Radio. Coming soon to our website, spacedoutradio.com, is the SOR Space Travelers Club. For just five bucks a month, you can get into a private area on our site where you can hang with other listeners in our chat room, post in our forum, and check out a bunch of exclusive content and store that won't be found anywhere else, including a nightly after show party with Dave. It's going to be the best five dollars a month you're going to spend. The SOR Space Travelers, only at spacedoutradio.com. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Are you tired of being blocked, shadow banned, or placed in jail for simply posting your thoughts on social media? Social Media Freedom can take care of that for you. Social Media Freedom is the newest and one of the best free new apps that allows you the freedom to post what you want, when you want. It takes seconds to download from your app store. Come join the tribe at Social Media Freedom. It's time to set yourself free. Heading to Vancouver and looking for a night on the town? The Moose Vancouver is the bar that never stops rocking until 2 a.m. every night. The Moose has great food with everything on the menu from $6.95 to $8.95. Fantastic, vibrant staff and rock and roll that will bring you back to when the music was real, the hair was long, and the guitars were rocking. Get your party on at the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? 
Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. We pass the halfway point of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Great to have you along for the ride on this Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning or afternoon if you are down under. Remember, if you've missed most of this show so far or any of our other shows, you can always go to our YouTube channel. Go to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. That's where our archives are. And, of course, our website, spacedoutradio.com, being rebuilt as we speak. It'll be a couple of weeks, but it's going to look fine and dandy. So make sure you check it on out when we got it back up. Award-winning author, movie producer, movie director. Ian Holt is with us tonight, formerly of MTV Raps. Ian comes in every couple of months to just shoot the breeze on what is happening around the world in music, the horror genre, paranormal, whatever it may be. He's pretty versatile, and that's why we love him. Ian, welcome back to the show. Thank you, sir. Great to be here again. You're good friends with the boys from Ghost Hunters, Jason Hawes and the crew. And after a couple of year hiatus, they are getting back in front of the camera to restart their television careers. Now, I have to admit, I really liked these guys when they were on TV. I, I always found it a little frustrating. You and I talked about it because, let's face it, if I have a haunted house, which I do, I'm not bringing in a ghost team here to tell me it's haunted. I want some answers. And you and I have talked ad nauseum that that was one of the biggest problems in paranormal television. Is this going to be pretty much the same as what we had in the past with their new show? No, and it's actually pretty exciting because um, I had numerous... First of all, Jason Hawes, who's uh, no longer with Grant. Grant's off doing music and a lot of other things. Um, Jason is the one who... I've had paranormal experiences my whole life, and it was with through Jason that I discovered that when I moved to Long Beach, this is before cable, before Atari, um, in in Long Island. Um, my grandmother got me a Ouija board and I used to play with it at night in my room, you know, cause I didn't have any video games. So there was, there were no video games yet. And I opened the door. He, he's the one who figured it out. And, um, in my discussions with him, I used to push him about what are you doing with the evidence? Why are you not, if you find that a ghost is in the house, why don't you ever bring a medium in and find, or get evidence of who this ghost is? Because he's all about finding evidence, you know? Um, and, you know, if you can find a ghost and you find a place is haunted and you, you can figure out who the ghost is and then check the historical record that the person really lived in the house and put a name to it and find out how he died. And if you're getting this information from a medium or from your investigation, then it's more rock hard proof that the, there was a person that died this way or lived in the house and this or that happened and they didn't go into the light or whatever reason why the haunting is happening. And if you can document it, it's more evidence. And he always, you know, uh, well, it doesn't fit the uh, the uh, the parameters of the show. So now in this new show on the Travel Channel, Ghost Nation, which will be premiering soon in the fall, um, he's going to be investigating when he can the history of whatever en- the of the entity if he finds the place is haunted, and he's going to also, which I talk to him about was uh presenting the evidence so i'm i mean he's really taking the ghost hunting show and moving it into another caliber where he's taking a full scientific approach not just to 
investigating, but to presenting evidence to qualified people to try and push the science forward, to make it not taboo for, uh, you know, I mean, we, we laugh at Ghostbusters, but there are paranormal investigators and none of them get grants or attached to universities for a steady flow of money and documented scientific evidence. And one of the reasons is ghosts don't operate on people's schedules, or at least so it seems. So unless you have a, you know, a, uh, a residual haunting, you know, where it's just on, on a loop and it just, you know, walks from the window to the, to the kitchen and disappears. But uh, um, an intelligent haunt, um, or a poltergeist, or even an inhuman, you can't repeat the experiment. But what you can do is if you can get more than one um, uh, recording of it, I mean, I mean, people just, dis, just disavow the, you know, the, the, the spectral voices on the recordings, you know, but if you ask its name and it tells you, then find out if a guy that by that name lived in the house or wherever you are. And I find that to be, um, you know, pretty, pretty exciting for a new show to, to, to tackle that. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. And, uh, I, you know, I wish them all the best. And it's interesting that Josh Gates, who I don't know if you guys know, but he's going to be doing with working with live nation to do a live tour to speak about all his, all his investigations, uh, and where they are now updating us all of it and giving a lecture. So if you uh, look for tickets, he's going to be out here in Westbury on Long Island in November. But Josh Gates brought his show, you know, reworked it as Expedition Unknown, brought it to the Travel Channel, and it became the most popular show, and it went on to Discovery. So it shows you the audience is hungry out there. I don't know if Josh was involved or not, but now goes hungry. And I hope it makes it to Discovery, too. I hope it is that popular. I wish them all the best, because... They're a great bunch of guys and they, you know, they really respect the evidence. Well, respect is one thing and bringing it to the other. I think part of the issue that I had with the last show, and it's my opinion, I know other people will have other opinions of it as well, but I thought a lot of times they were patronizing their own evidence for the sake of television and the, the, you know, the sake of skepticism as well. And I always find that a little bit difficult to take, especially when the camera obviously shows something's going on, but here they are denying that it ever happened. And it's kind of like, come on, really? Well, they would remember they were the science sci-fi channels, wicked stepchild, you know, sci-fi put the show on the air, became the number one show on cable. And it was able to set up, universal buying sci-fi and then once the new people came in from universal they looked at the show as the wicked stepchild because they didn't want the show on the air you know and they did everything they could to end it i mean you know once universal took over there were no more live investigations you know like at the uh the hotel where they filmed the shining and all the stuff that they did for the hollow special halloween episodes they didn't do that anymore they basically you never knew when the show was going to come back they threw it on the air they didn't promote it because it wasn't their idea. And I think that the makers behind the show, the producers that work for Universal now, they took, they didn't want to make it like, oh, this is concrete proof or anything. They, they were afraid that the show would be looked at as kooky and, you know, and they would be associated with it in a similar. Um, and I know this because when I was doing my book tour, um, I, I worked at Buckwald, uh, which is an agency, which was Howard Stern's agent. And then I was on the air opposite him when I did, uh, uh, the New York morning radio with Dre, Dr. Dre and Ed Lover. And we were his competition. So when the book came out, he did a review of the book on air and asked on air. And I didn't listen to the show, but he asked if this was the same Ian Holt. And he said, if you're out there, call us, we will get you on the show. And uh, a friend of mine, uh, I was friends with two uh, women who were actually strippers in L.A., and I, uh, they were visiting New York, and I called them up, and I said, listen, would you go on the Howard Stern show? He'll love me, and I'll promote the book, and we'll get to 40 million listeners. And the publisher didn't want to be associated with Howard Stern, and they wouldn't let me go on. 
And I was like, how could you not, you know, that's 40 million listeners. You know how many books that could sell? But they wouldn't let me on because of their own, like, quirks about, you know, uh, corp, the, cor- the, the corporate image. And I didn't get to go on. The same thing with the Suicide Girls website. Uh, Missy Suicide offered to come to all my book signings and bring her girls dressed in shrouds like vampires, and they would walk me out to, <laughs> to the book signing and stand beside me while I signed the books, doing a kind of gothic thing. Because they're a soft porn website, they didn't, even though it's the number one website to connect to the goth audience, which is my, one of my main audiences for the book, they wouldn't do it. I, I had a fight with them to get me to, to, go, to, to let me go to uh, Comic-Con which was such a huge hit. I mean, I, the lines were out the door, you know, and uh, a lot of times, you know, you're, you're stuck because you can't do what you know you should be doing. So I've experienced this myself. So I don't know how much um, of that way they had of presenting the evidence was actually Jason and how much, and Grant and how much was, the influence of Universal when they bought the Sci-Fi Channel. Well, I understand that, and I hope it does come back to do something a little bit different, more intriguing, because from what I've heard in the background of things, these guys on Jason's team are actually pretty, pretty intuitive, some of them. And what I find funny is in their TAPS groups that have popped up all across North America and the world to be part of this TAPS family, when they go on investigation, you're not allowed to use psychic mediums, from what I've been told, because that goes against the TAPS rules. Yet here we are with Jason's new show, and now he's going to be using psychics. That's very interesting. I was investigating the psychic end of it. He didn't use psychics because psychics is non-provable. There's no way to prove that the woman is feeling these things. And I... Or, or sensing these things, or what he's sensing. He wanted scientific evidence. And when you bring in a psychic, it immediately calls into question all your evidence. Because if you're basing anything on a psychic or presenting any psychic evidence, which is tough, especially, you know, for Lorraine. I mean, she had her own belief on everything, you know, which was improvable. And you see the reaction when things are improvable, how people, some people get. So I, I understand why, but I think he's bringing, he'll be bringing them on to test them. So if they get a reading of who this person is, then they can go and search the evidence and find out if the, if the ghost really existed. So just like everything else, it'll be a test of evidence, not just, Oh, here's a psychic, you know, as a lot of these ghost hunting shows presented, you know, because, Oh, I got a feeling this person is this, this person is that, but very rarely do they actually go and research the person, you know, it's just left like a dangling participle. If, if anything that the psychic is telling them is real. But I mean, you know, I've spoken to police officers that say, you know, 90% of the psychics that come to them is garbage. It's all nonsense. And then, um, I mean, there was a great episode of 2020 where the psychic who had helped, you know, who always goes to the police with what she had, they gave her a picture of a girl and she said she was dead. And the girl and the woman, the interviewer said, that's a picture of me as a child. I'm right here. And the woman didn't know what to say and got up from the interview and left. So, I mean, those are the images that we retain. And I think, you know, trying to prove whether a psychic could have known something or not, or knows something that pulls out of the air or the ether, it should be really interesting. Well, it's something that I do understand that there is a lot of questions as to whether or not psychics should be used on paranormal investigation. I think they should. I consider them just as much of a an experimental tool as anything that people are using out in the field these days with technology. But just because it has something scientific behind it, you're not trusting anything to do with intuition. Yet you talk to all the big name paranormal investigators out there, whether it's John Tenney, whether it's David Weatherly or anybody along those lines. It's amazing how much they say intuition is the forgotten art of the paranormal. Well, I mean, just from my experience, you know, we talk about the vining rods. You know how controversial they are, finding water, finding yes. oil, finding gold. But I use divining rods to have a 20-minute conversation with a ghost at the, uh, 
at the uh, West Virginia um, uh, Trans Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. You know, and every I, I said to the ghost. You know, I'm holding the rods, I, and, and I had it backed up with an EMF detector. And I said, if you take a step forward, you know, the, the, the rods will cross and the EMF detector will sound. So that'll be a yes. If it's a no, stay back, and it won't. And I had a 20-minute in front of 15 people that were there with me. I had a 20-minute conversation with a ghost at the, at the Trans-Allegheny Lunatic Asylum. And the divining rods worked. They were copper divining rods, and they worked. And I was just as they worked every time they would cross. And I was just holding them lightly in my hands. The EMF detector would go off at the same time, backing up what was happening with divining rods. I don't understand it. I can't explain it, but it worked. So that there you go. You know, psychic's got to be the same way. You can't explain it. You just have to go with it. But if you use the psychic to investigate psychics, and more than not, the you know you find historical evidence to back up what she says, or they or he says. You can you know you can help change that that um, uh, negative reaction to the psychics because you, it's unprovable. So I mean, or it's you know unscientific, I should say, not unprovable, but unscientific. I mean, I, I I'm going to find that very interesting, you know, and. and any psychic that would put themselves up to be scientifically investigated, I mean, because you could find nothing. It may not, the records may not exist, and then the question is on the psychic if they're real or not, it could fa- affect their business. So, I mean, any psychic that, that would open themselves up to that kind of testing um, would have to be, believe, or at least they believe, they're, they're right. And it's not a joke, because why would a, why would a charlatan go on a show to be tested and wind up you know, hurting their own reputation. You know, if you know, you notice Chip Coffee isn't the guy that goes, oh, there's a woman out there, and something with an R. He doesn't do that. You know, he gets very specific right away, where some of them, like Edwards, I mean, getting something with an R, you know, and, and that's the joke, because anyone goes, oh, yeah, I lost someone named Robert. You know, how many people have a, the name uh, begins with an R that you've lost? You know, my, my uncle's name was Bob Robert. You know, if someone said, oh, I'm getting something with someone with an R, I would look up, right? Uh, I mean, that's, that's the kind of psychic that I just toss out. No matter if they're real or not, it, the, their approach to it is such a, uh, could be such a scam, you know, that, you know, you, you, you know I mean, but I mean, you watch Ship Coffee and he said, he said, how many people have, uh, Indian artifacts, uh, 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 you know, he called it a tomahawk, but it was actually a spear. But, I mean, how, how close can you get? And that's pulling it out of the air, and that's specific. I don't see how you can fake that. We've got about three and a half minutes here before we got to go to break here at the top of the hour. Ian Holt is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. Now, Ian... In regards to that, there, there's always been a a large debate whether or not psychics can be proved, disproved, but people are having those feelings. I don't think you're denying the fact that people are having intuitive outbreaks, if we could call it that, during investigation or even in everyday life. I know plenty of intuitive people who have been very accurate with me, extremely. I think it's a, it's whether or not you have a connection with the person. I think that's something that goes along with it, even though it can't really tell. But I'm not convinced that they're not a, a, a good tool when we don't even know if the gear that is being used that is electronic or battery operated even works for itself. We don't know if we're having our legs pulled on that and spending a bunch of money on a bunch of horseshoes that light up in the sky. Right. I mean, it's, it's, look, these things, divining rods, psychics, um, alchemy, all these things have been around, for thousands of years, they don't things that, you know, snake oil salesmen went out with the old West, you know, I mean, nobody believes there's a tonic that's going to grow your hair and, and also cure cancer. You know, it, it, the, the things that 
people over centuries, generation after generation, believe in. There's some basis in fact for it. I mean, even in um, even in the oracles, you know, of, of ancient Greece. I mean, they find out that there was a uh, you know a gaseous fissure in the rock in the in the uh, oracle in uh, at Delphi, and it would put them into a trance into a hypnotic space. Now, from my own experience, you know, when I turned 18. I was, I was very, I supposedly, and I can't prove it. I'm not Elizabeth Warren here, but I supposedly have some Native American blood in me from my dad's side. Um, I mean, I'm talking like maybe one tenth going back generations, but, um, and uh, I was always interested in Native American culture and mysticism and mythology. Right. And, um, and I, you know, took peyote. I actually did a sweat lodge and took peyote uh, on my 18th birthday. I actually saw a spirit animal. I believe, I don't know if I was in the spirit realm, uh, but I, I was able to look at myself from the outside in and see myself the way other people see me. And I was able to see my, my flaws and my character and certain things. And it changed me. Um, and I did feel different afterwards. So fifteen seconds. I I can't say I was in a, a spirit realm, but it did have some effect on me. So you got to say there's some truth to it. So why not to psychics too? Well, I think it's a matter of finding that happy medium. No pun intended, Ian. That's just the way it is. And one day, maybe both sides will come together as one and actually find some answers in their paranormal quest. Ian Holt is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. We got him for another 30 minutes. And in hour three, he is breaking down Avengers The Endgame. Gonna have some fun with that. Coming up, hour three on Spaced Out Radio. At SpacedOutRadio.com, we have a little bit of everything for you to stay up late. So while you're there, check out our SOR Newswire, where our team brings you stories of the weird and strange to the WTF from around the globe. News on Bigfoot, UFOs, paranormal, Darwinian-type crime tales. It's the stories that the mainstream media usually won't touch. Well, we got them all on the SOR Newswire, only at SpacedOutRadio.com. Come hang out with Spaced Out Radio, where we own the night. This is Carl. You can follow Dave on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio, and during the show, use the hashtag Spaced Out Radio to chat with us live. On Instagram, at Dave Scott SOR. On Facebook, give our page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. SOR archives are free on YouTube, at Spaced Out Radio. Come join us, or I will come join you. See you at your window. The freedom to post what you want, when you want. That's the social media freedom you need. Social media freedom is the free app in your app store. No need to worry about going to jail or being shadow banned any longer. It's the freedom to say what you feel. The freedom to know Big Brother isn't watching. It's the way social media is supposed to be. Social media freedom. It's time to set yourself free. Download from your app store today. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box, the iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box, the spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website, including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. 
Check out our competitive pricing today. Come get spooked at the 4th Annual Forest Moon Paracon in Cedar Woolly, Washington, Saturday, September 28th. UFOs, ghosts, aliens, Bigfoot. Speakers include Mike Morin and Jason Jordan, R. Keith Andrews, and Dave Scott from Spaced Out Radio, and so much more. There will be workshops and a VIP roundtable. Get early bird tickets now at fmparacon.com. We are getting ready to relaunch the SOR Space Travelers Club at spacedoutradio.com for $5 a month. You can join us for a plethora of features found nowhere else. Hang out in a private chat room during the show and after party. You can check out some exclusive content and a store specifically for you, as well as a private listener forum where you can post your thoughts, stories, and pictures. The SOR Space Travelers Club, coming soon to spacedoutradio.com. Heading to Vancouver and looking for a night on the town? The Moose Vancouver is the bar that never stops rocking until 2 a.m. every night. The Moose has great food with everything on the menu from $6.95 to $8.95. Fantastic, vibrant staff and rock and roll that will bring you back to when the music was real, the hair was long, and the guitars were rocking. Get your party on at the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Find your escape where time has no limits. It's about living today and cherishing the heritage of yesterday. A spirit of adventure for what is new with the nostalgia of the past. Your timepiece is a reflection of who you are. Life surrounded by beauty from the world around us to the soul within. Escapewatches.com There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. The Call of the Wild is in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is one of the hottest bars and restaurants in the city. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose will rock you like a hurricane all night long. Great food with everything on the menu at $6.95. Near the corner of Nelson and Granville, get your horns up and come rock with us. The Moose Vancouver, the official rocking bar of Spaced Out Radio. Canada's largest UFO conference is ready to roll in Toronto this September 21st and 22nd at the Alien Cosmic Expo. This year is about the experience. Listen to the stories of Dave Scott, Travis Walton, Paula Harris, Grant Cameron, Ryan Stacey, Richard Dolan, Leslie Mitchell-Clark, and more. Get your tickets now at aliencosmicexpo.com. On the first Tuesday of every month, I encourage you to come along for a journey with me, Geraldine Orozco, on The Spiritual You. Together, we will take a look at how to access the highest expression of yourself and change your life, consciousness, ET contact, health, and wellness. We can talk about it all. So come along for a spiritual ride with me, Geraldine Orozco, on The Spiritual You, only on Spaced Out Radio. 
Looking for the stories of the strange and weird that you will find hard to find anywhere else? Check out the SOR Newswire on our website. Our writers, led by Captain Shirk, are scouring the world for the oddest and most bizarre stories we can find. Everything from weird crime to suspenseful and paranormal. We're working hard for you to bring you the most intriguing news of your day. Check out the SOR Newswire at spacedoutradio.com today. you like to connect with us head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info now back to dave scott and sor welcome back to the third and final hour of spaced out radio tonight i am your host dave scott great to have you with us tomorrow night on the show we look at majestic 12 what really was the u.s government covering up tom whitmore will be with us to break it all down 906 pacific 1206 a.m eastern at spacedoutradio.com. Hi to everyone listening in on KDUN AM 1030 in Reedsport, Oregon. WQEE 99.1 FM in noon in Georgia. UPRN 107.7 FM in New Orleans and in Ridgecrest, California. KZFX 93.7 FM on the digital side. Hi to everyone listening in on Revolution Radio and Deep Talk Radio. Remember, all of our archives are free at youtube.com forward slash spacedoutradio. The only thing I ask in return... Hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. And Fractious. And Fractious is your password. Make sure you use it wisely, Space Travelers, as the Clam sets the password each and every night right here on the mighty SOR. Our website, currently under construction, is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you. And there will be more coming you just got to stay tuned for the final time tonight we introduce ian holt if you haven't heard him before you're missing on out ian's very very knowledgeable when it comes to the horror genre paranormal everything weird and strange he is also the co-author of the sequel to bram stoker's dracula he won a couple of awards for that ian welcome back to the show and it's the home stretch you're a big movie buff. I am not. Yes. I can fully admit that. I cannot tell you. Actually, I can tell Except you my, the last mo- movie I saw. Movie buff, my movies. Yes. Well, the last movie yes. I saw was this past weekend because my little guy wanted to watch the Pixar film Wally. Now that came out about ten years ago. But nonetheless, oh, what a great. Oh yeah, isn't it? Oh. And it's such a great message too, you know. Uh, if we if we, uh, if we allow technology to take over all aspects of our lives, we turn into jellyfish, big fat blobs on the sofa. We can't even walk anymore. We have to have um, uh, anti gravity seats to go around. In. <laughs> I know. I know. It's fantastic. I, I I'm not thinking. I don't know. My jury is still out whether that's good or bad. I haven't figured it out I, yet. Yeah, we all pasty white because we don't want to go outside the sun. We're all, we're all like, uh, we all look like a Stay Puft marshmallow man. <laughs> well, that's the way we do it around here, and I think for a lot of films, Pixar and Disney really get it right. They really do. But everybody well, right now, put, go ahead, go ahead. Play Pixar with Disney. I mean, Pixar operates on its own, luckily because. Disney gives us such junk, like the two Star Wars or three Star Wars movies, uh, just been awful. And and like Frozen, you know, to me was one of the most hated movies I've ever seen because it teaches little girls to be vapid, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, 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 obsessed with possessions and you know and, and status and money. I mean, you look at the people that live in the village, the poor people; they all look like hell. You know, they're ugly and dirty and just, and, you know, the people that live in the palace are so beautiful and special. It's, it's such a horrible presentation. And every, every girl in it is the perfect figure. And all the people in the village, the regular people are, are tubby. And, you know, it's, it's just, it, it, to me, Disney is the worst. It's just the worst that Marvel operates on its own pixar operates on its own they're just the bank and the distributor i mean i think disney what disney does to kids is just horrible but 
that's for another time. <laughs> Well, I mean, there is a lot to be said. I mean, they are very successful with what they do. You could almost say the same thing for the 1987-88 film, The Little Mermaid. You could almost do that as well. Yeah, all of them. All of them. I, I, I detest all the Disney stuff. Um, but I love Pixar. I, absolutely, I mean, Pixar, I mean, even though they've gotten rid of John Lasseter and Lasseter has gone to another company, which I'm anxious to see what he's going to do on his own, um, uh, I, I mean, Pixar still, you know, they have enough people that he brought up under him that are amazing at what they do. I mean, the, the, the graphics, the CGI, the stories, the scripts, you know, and they don't rush. I mean, how many years are they taken to do another toy story? You know, they, they don't work off release dates. They work when the script is ready, which is just, you know, it, it is, a, is, I think a key to their success. Well, you know what? I'm a big fan. I'll tell you what I don't do, though, is with my little guy, after watching it as my daughter grew up, she's now 20, my stepdaughter, who's 16, the one thing I don't do anymore is I do not allow my children to watch a lot of these Disney shows. Because if you look at it, the way they kind of broadcast it, it's kind of like the minute you become an adult, you become stupid. Yeah. And I I really think, and the, and the kids in those Disney shows, especially the, the sitcom types, I think that the way they portray parents as, and adults as stupid, as ignorant, as, as brain dead, I don't allow my kids to watch well, that. You, you, you start watching those shows very young. And then you become a teenager, and the teenage shows are even worse. You're more guilty of that. And at, it's at a time when you don't want to listen to your parents anyway. So the show reinforces, psychologically reinforces for a teen that their parents don't know what they're talking about, and the teen knows everything. And um, not only is that untrue and dangerous, I think, but, you know, it's irresponsible, but it's all in the course of money. You know, Disney is is a money machine. I mean, even the fact that they canceled all the Marvel shows on Netflix so they could start their own streaming service and make you pay money to them. I mean, I find it disgusting. Same thing Paramount. Oh, you want to see a new Star Trek series? you got to pay for it. Even though there's nothing else on the channel now, it has a Twilight Zone. But, I mean, all these, you know, every Netflix is going to get broken up and be like, oh, if you want to watch a Paramount movie, you have to pay $10 to Paramount, $10 to Disney, $10 to Universal, $10 to Warner's. And that was the Fox. I mean, it's going to be ridiculous. Getting to the Avengers Endgame, speaking of money, they had the most successful weekend in Hollywood history, grossing $1.3 billion worldwide on opening weekend. And already they are the 10th highest grossing film of all time. I mean, this yep. is a huge, huge film. That just came out. And you went and saw it. It's majorly significant in the fact that it opened day and date in China. And China, the China box office is only $19 million off from the domestic American box office. So that should be a warning bell to everyone in Hollywood that, you know, China's coming. They're starting their own Hollywood. And their buying power is huge. You know, and for the first time, Hollywood's going to have competition. And I hope, and the money's in China, too. So I'm hoping that, you know, this ups Hollywood's game, you know, where they're not going to be putting out junk just to, with some special effects to tease us into the theaters, that they'll actually start going back to making great films like Avengers. I mean, it, it's a monumental achievement. I don't, I mean, since the first feature-length film, I, I mean... To do 21 films and then the 22nd tell a whole story and it connects so perfectly with different directors, different writers, all overseen by John Favreau and Kevin Feige. It's a monumental achievement and such an emotional story. You know, when you watch it, you know, from other blockbusters, I mean, you could say it was slow, but you're so into the characters, the character development outweighs even the special effects, and that's the way it should be. Special effects should be the cherry on top. You got to love the characters, 
and you do, you know, you with them, you know, everything about them and you, 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 you know, their, their choices, you know, and the way it plays with, you know, on the, on the previous films, it, it's really amazing. I mean, I've seen it three times already. I'm just, uh, you know, it's, it, it, I feel like, you know, like last year I got, you know, the new Halloween and then another Creed and I felt like a little kid again, you know, like waiting for the movie to open, like we were waiting for the next Star Wars. So it's it's pretty amazing what what Marvel has been able to do just by sticking to the story. They fired directors. It is not like at DC where the director is the star and whatever he wants, they'll change the megalomaniac like uh, who'll change the entire story to fit his wants. No. Marvel did it like in the comic books, the characters that we love presenting them the way we love them. And it was a winning it's a winning strategy. And they're not afraid to fire anyone that is trying to go off script. And uh, I, you know, you got to admire that, you know, um, I, I mean, the Russo brothers coming from sitcoms that they found them and gave them this opportunity and how great they are. I mean, even though they didn't do a great job with Terminator, the fact that they've been able to pull off these Marvel films, with just a, a sitcom, you know, arrested development background. It's really amazing. Um, I think, uh, you know, I mean, look what look how DC screwed everything up with with uh, Snyder. I mean, uh, I feel sorry for the guy that's thought of committed suicide, but um, they've been his movies have been less than enjoyable for sure. Um, and uh, I mean, the interesting thing about how this ties into the paranormal is here are millions upon millions of people around the world paying money to go in to see a film that they love, that is surrounded with paranormal and aliens and UFOs and all this stuff and life in the galaxy and a much bigger universe than we can possibly imagine with science and magic and all this stuff. Yet, they will look at the scientific evidence of it and dismiss it out outright. But they or ridicule it. People that have had experiences and dare to talk about it. But they will dump out money to live it in a film. It's always been a paradox to me. I can't explain that. You know, um, I saw Close Encounters. The next day I joined the Skywatchers Club because I, I wanted to know more. You know, I was a little kid. And I got the program from the book, and it had Heimlich in there, uh, Heimlich, and it had, you know, to join his club. And we were all watching the skies at different times, and we had, you know, a set hours that were given to us to look to the skies. I mean, if you if you enjoy something, you want to o- open to is it real, you know, or the real story behind it. I mean, people just, you know, say werewolf and and uh, and and deny that that could be a werewolf. Yet there are people that have a psychological problem that act like animals. They have cycles where they go through and run in the woods and do all this stuff. We can't explain it. Uh, Renfield syndrome is an actual psychological um, condition where people drink blood. I mean, so there's roots of reality in this stuff if you look. But to say, oh, there are no aliens, there are no UFOs, there's nothing, and then spend the money to see a movie like this and get so jazzed about it and so excited about it, I, I find it fascinating. Do you think that maybe this movie was a tad more special and a tad more emotional because of the passing of Stan Lee? Um, of course. I mean, you know, when you see him or anything, you know, see Stan Lee now, I mean, you know, he's in the movie, you know, he's going to be in every Marvel movie. They got him digitized and he's going to be in it. I, I think uh, it is more emotional because you're watching, I mean, it sounds silly, but just as much as, someone who, you know, cured a, a polio or, you know, uh, or whatever, you know, great discoveries, the electric light, Tesla, Edison, you know, Alexander Graham Bell, Mariucci, whoever you want to call, whichever you want to believe. But it, it, he is one of the geniuses of our time, just, you know, in his own field. He is the Einstein of, of this type of film. I mean, the characters he came up with, the fact that they can be passed from generation to generation and every generation loves them, like Dracula, 
to find something in them. You know, um, there have been plenty of superheroes, but none have lasted like, it, or or the quantity of them that Stanley and Jack Kirby, you always got to put a Kirby in there, created. I mean, it's astonishing. I mean, he's a gen- he was a genius. And remember, comic books when he started were just didn't make money. You know, I mean, he found a way to make them popular. I mean, they were considered, you know you know, uh, Penny Dreadfuls, you know, it, it was just, um, I mean, what he did was absolutely amazing. And it's a testament to his genius. Uh, uh, uh you know, it's the ultimate reward of, uh, end game. I'm sad that he didn't live to see this opening because for sure it's the, you know, the paramount of his career. I mean, he really was a literary genius. What made this film so successful in its opening weekend? Because very rarely in Hollywood history has a movie come out with this much bluster, this much hype. I mean, the the last one that I could recall and it would be Avatar. Comparatively, well, to this one. Also, maybe Black maybe Black Panther as well. Superman two. I mean, we've had these movies. You know, there are more screens now. This American film is a global marketplace now. I mean, you have you have movie theaters in, in El Salvador that play this stuff. I mean, you know, the Asian market. You know, I mean, when you go, I mean, it's amazing when you go to Asia. The way, even though the, the political systems are different in in China, they idolize American culture, and it's not you know looked frowned upon like in like in. France, I mean, to idolize American culture isn't a good thing. In China, it's embraced. There are people, would you believe they hire American actors to come to China and they pay you to get dressed in an expensive suit and come to their weddings and their parties and their business functions because it's considered uh, special to have an American friend. If you have American friends, so people pay people to just be American and hang out at parties so they think you're, uh, you're highfalutin. Because you have American friends, it makes the uh, it's a status symbol. I mean, it's amazing, and now they've embraced our culture so, um, uh, you know, the, the amount of money that you can make around the world. So it's a whole new ball game from anything that we imagine, and the amount of money you can spend on a film now. I mean, you were talking about movies when they did Titanic, and it was two hundred million. Everybody thought it was going to be a disaster. You know when. Um, when uh, Heaven's Gate was like over uh, like 150 million, you know, no one wanted to make a movie that expensive because it bombed. It was a disaster. So now you've got movies regularly make spend 300 million to make it. The, the thing about it is they put it on the screen. I mean, the the end battle is as exciting as anything you've seen in Spartacus or or um, the Return of the King because it's interpersonal battles and you have each hero reacting with Thanos and their loss. And, you know, so these, these is this big gigantic thing going on, but there's these little battles going on, you know, that, that are very emotional. And, you know, there's a scene where the entire armies of Thanos and, and Captain America stands alone, knowing he's going to die. He stands up there and he's going to take them all on by himself, you know, and you're practically, you know, it's so emotional. You know, and when the, you know, I won't tell you what happened. I won't give anything away, but there's so many emotional scenes and it comes out of the characters, which is something we haven't seen in a long time. And I think the reaction is that we have seen either in theaters or on cable or on TV or video and disc, the, all these movies and they're telling one giant story and you can go to any movie and this, this film goes back into the other films you know, as they travel through time in the quantum realm. And it's, it's, you, they plug these characters into scenes from the other movie, and you realize it was all plotted out from the beginning. It had to be. There are things happened in films, that we, the earlier films that you can't explain, and it's explained in this one, and it happened five years ago. It's absolutely amazing. There's never been anything like this. You know, the closest you can come to it I mean, even Game of Thrones, because they ran out of books, they made it up at the end, the, the, whatever's happening. The closest you can come to this is Breaking Bad, which was conceived five seasons, whole story plotted out from the beginning. 
That's why it's so perfect. And now they've done it in, in film with 22 films. And you got to realize the only other series across from 63 till now, 20 is going to be the 25th film is James Bond. No other franchise has gotten even close to that. we got about three minutes left with you tonight, Ian Holt, and it's always a pleasure to have you on. Let's get your take. What's happening with you and your movie career right now? Well, um, we just finished Death Metal. Um, it's about a, uh, a cursed uh, song uh, or manuscript um, that was originally played in the 1700s by a female composer. And when she sold her soul to the devil, as we were talking earlier, to write this most horrific piece of music, everyone who hears it goes insane and kill each other and are are taken by demons. So it's anyone who hears it dies. So a little twist on um, on the ring. Um, and uh, that'll be coming to theater soon. I mean, we're going to open it at the festivals. Um, and I'm uh, we're getting ready to start production on Unhinged which is a supernatural thriller starring Mickey Rourke, which we're really excited about. I'm really excited to work with Mickey. I've wanted to do that since I was in college. You know, there's a funny story. I was in acting school with Stella Adler, who trained De Niro and Brando. And uh, the, every day it was, um, uh, what's his name, from A Room with a View, uh, um, um, who starred in Lincoln. I can't think of his name right now. And... Uh, you know, that, you know, he was the greatest actor. And I said, no, Mickey, after seeing Barfly, was the greatest actor since De Niro. And I mean, Brando. And, you know, his career's had up and downs because he's had mental problems. He's bipolar and he's had his issues. But, I mean, I, he was always like one of my favorites. So I get a chance to work with him. And I've known him through the years because we're both New York characters. And we've had, you know, like uh, Costas Smandalo, who starred in my first film, Dr. Chopper, is best friends with Mickey. So I've known them for years, but finally get to work with him is really exciting. And I can't wait to see what he does, you know, with the characters that I wrote, you know, kind of like a, when I was in college, that was my wish to work with Mickey Rourke, and now I'm doing it. So it's pretty exciting. Well, I hope uh, it comes out soon, man. I know you've been working hard on this for about a year to two years on this film. You know, it's time. We need to see it. Well, it was going to go into production, for those of you who haven't listened to the show, about two years ago in another company. And um, when uh, we signed Mickey, the owner of the company wanted his wife to play, who had never done anything, really, to play opposite Mickey. You can't put an inexperienced actress opposite Mickey Rourke, especially we have big-name actresses that want to play the part. So the movie went into turnaround, and we had to start all over again. That's why it's... I mean, I've been talking about it for a year and a half that I'm starting production, but that's what happened. One of the, one of those Hollywood, you know, stories, but, um, uh, you know, it, it slowed us down for a year, but now we're getting back to it. So I'm, you know, <laughs> I had the rug pulled out of me once, out on one. Yes. So now we're getting, we're getting into it. Ian Holt, thank you so much for coming on Spaced Out Radio tonight. Talk to you on our birthdays I'm- in 24 days, my friend. Yep. One less day every day from dying young. <laughs> you got that right. You got that right. The SOR Newswire and the Thought of the Day coming on up next on Spaced Out Radio. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. A timepiece is a reflection of who you are. And what better way to show off the real you than with an Escape watch? Escape is a lifestyle brand accessorizing your days and nights. Choose to escape and create the life of discovery that you deserve. Dream. Play. Unite with your own personalized Escape watch. Head to escapewatches.com. 
there is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. Coming soon to our website, spacedoutradio.com, is the SOR Space Travelers Club. For just five bucks a month, you can get into a private area on our site where you can hang with other listeners in our chat room, post in our forum, and check out a bunch of exclusive content and store that won't be found anywhere else, including a nightly after show party with Dave. It's going to be the best five dollars a month you're going to spend. The SOR Space Travelers, only at spacedoutradio.com. Heading to Vancouver and looking for a night on the town? The Moose Vancouver is the bar that never stops rocking until 2 a.m. every night. The Moose has great food with everything on the menu from $6.95 to $8.95. Fantastic, vibrant staff and rock and roll that will bring you back to when the music was real, the hair was long, and the guitars were rocking. Get your party on at the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Are you tired of being blocked, shadow banned, or placed in jail for simply posting your thoughts on social media? Social Media Freedom can take care of that for you. Social Media Freedom is the newest and one of the best free new apps that allows you the freedom to post what you want, when you want. It takes seconds to download from your app store. Come join the tribe at Social Media Freedom. It's time to set yourself free. Come get spooked at the 4th Annual Forest Moon Paracon in Cedro Woolley, Washington, Saturday, September 28th. UFOs, ghosts, aliens, Bigfoot, speakers include Mike Morin and Jason Jordan, R. Keith Andrews, and Dave Scott from Spaced Out Radio, and so much more. There will be workshops and a VIP roundtable. Get early bird tickets now at fmparacon.com. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Did you know Spaced Out Radio runs seven days a week? Hi there, this is Tessa Nicole Thomas, and I'm here to take you on a paranormal journey each Saturday and Sunday night. Why change the station when you have it all right here? Together, we'll hang out and share some strange and scary stories. And don't forget, we have Psychic Sundays as well, so come tune in Spaced Out Weekend. We get going at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com, where we own the night. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. We're bringing scientific thought to the paranormal. Hi there, this is Spaced Out Radio scientist Chris Cogswell. Join me, Chris Zuger, and Dave Scott, the second Wednesday of every month, where we break down the who from the woo when it comes to everything paranormal. We'll investigate and try to bring sensible answers to those straight and sometimes outlandish questions people have. Hey, not everything has an answer, but we'll do our best. Listen in to Reality Paranormal only on Spaced Out Radio. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. 
So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Coming up this September 21st and 22nd, all UFO eyes will be focused on Toronto for the 4th Annual Alien Cosmic Expo. Come listen to some of the biggest names and experiencers in ufology. Travis Walton, Paul Hellyer, Richard Dolan, Paula Harris, Grant Cameron, Randy Kramer, and Spaced Out Radio's own Dave Scott. Tickets are on sale now at AlienCosmicExpo.com. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? We've rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters. Remember, if you missed the interview with Ian Holt earlier on, you can go to our YouTube channel to find this show right after we're done and others. That's where we store our archives. YouTube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. And of course, coming soon, our brand new look, Spaced Out Radio website. It is under construction right now. It's going to look darn good. I've got an update today. It's going to look fantastic. The Gavinator is working on it. So we're looking forward to that. Let's get to the SOR Newswire. The news is always changing, which is why we bring you the SOR Newswire at the back end of every show where we get to the weird, the wacky, the WTF. When it comes to the strange stories that are going around the world that we got them for you. Well, this story just isn't going away. And being Canadian myself, I may have to start worrying about this. Because apparently the government of the Philippines wants to dump all our trash back on Canada's beaches following promises of a war declaration. Yes, a week after he warned Canada to take our garbage back that was shipped to the Philippines years ago, Filipino President Rodrigo Duterte is now threatening to dump tons of trash on the North America side, which would be my province, British Columbia. Last Tuesday, he threatened to declare war against Canada Within a week, if we fail to remove the garbage that was dumped in Manila, he gave that speech in Davao City on Sunday, giving Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, or as many of us like to call him up here, PM Unicorn, an ultimatum. This is what Duterte said. We will send them back to your shores if you don't get that. Don't know really what that means. Didn't really make sense. I think he needs a speech writer, but nonetheless, about starting a war with Canada and dumping garbage on its beaches, they're figures of speeches, says a few people who are looking into this. An expression of outrage, they call it. Canada shipped more than 100 containers of household trash, including plastic bottles and bags, newspapers, and used adult diapers to the Philippines from 2013 to 2014. Officials have said the shipments of waste were incorrectly declared by a private firm as recyclable plastic scraps. This is heating up. Still no word from Prime Minister Trudeau. 
the unicorn has bigger things to worry about right now. This is a sad story. You see, I like bees. Don't like being stung by them. But I can honestly tell you, point blank, that I have rescued a bee or two. I already rescued a bee in a puddle in my yard this year because bees are kind of important to everybody on this planet. Never mind the luscious honey that they create. But we also have to remember that the pollination that they do around the world kind of keeps us alive. Get rid of the bees, no more humans. Well, dozens of beehives were attacked and set on fire down in Texas over the weekend that killed an estimated half a million bees. The beehives were discovered Saturday morning scattered across the yard the Brazoria County Beekeepers Association wrote on their Facebook page, several hives appeared ashen black and one brood frame floated in water nearby with the bees still carrying or caring rather for their eggs. It's bad enough to think in today's world this would happen, but dumping them over and setting them on fire is beyond comprehension, said the BCBA. Each colony has about 30,000 bees estimated that 20 hives were damaged and half a million bees burned to death or drown. Who does this? Really, who does this? Like, who vandalizes this? This is the second report we've had on this recently. There's a $5,000 reward offered by Brazoria County Crime Stoppers BCBA is putting up another $1,000 for information leading to the suspect's arrest. I don't get it. I really don't get it. Like, how does this affect you? Whoever did this, how does it affect you? There's no point to doing this. No point to knocking over these bees and burning them. Don't get it. We need bees, people. We need to take care of our bees. You know, if things get too hectic and weird here in North America, you can always move to France. They're paying up to 5,000 euros for prospective homeowners seeking property in one of the historical French regions. Buyers looking to purchase a home in Ain which lies in the Haute-de-France region of the country, formerly known as Picardy. They'll be offering a huge lump sum of money for every property they buy. In this little realty scheme, which was created by 40 municipalities in the area, will breathe a new lease of life to the now sparsely populated area and help rejuvenate the area's old buildings. Like, this is gorgeous area. Gorgeous area. The question is, how much are the homes? Never mind the $5,000 or the 5,000 euros you'll get. Apparently, a lot of the homes are uninhabited. They need some work. So you got to be handy. However, the check being offered will come as a delight to many property seekers. Buyers will need to ensure they are first-time property owners or a new resident to one of the municipalities to receive the money. See, all of us here in North America, we qualify. I think it's a good idea. And there's some, like, giant castles and really cool brick structures. This is actually quite gorgeous. Quite gorgeous. It looks like it could be out of a movie, to be honest. They're hoping by the end of 2019, they'll be the only territory in the whole area that's fully connected to fiber optic internet as well. The messages to the families coming in is that this area will do everything you'll need to come and settle, because you will be fine and taken care of. We're going to have to watch this. This sounds way too good to be true. If you got a few extra bucks, you want to move to France, go get a free house. 
or a very cheap house. You have your pick of the litter right now. That's actually kind of cool. Let's head to the state of Florida, shall we? We got a couple of beauties here. Oh, yeah. If you don't get excited for this part of the show, I don't know what will get you excited. Florida man was arrested after causing a ruckus in a Tampa Bay library because he thought he was Jason Bourne, the iconic character from the Bourne Identity films. The Bourne series is fantastic. Well, 45-year-old John William Chapman, who looks nothing like Matt Damon, reeked of alcohol, refused to leave the library after multiple requests from staff asking him to just go away. When police arrived, he gave them a fake name with a bogus social security number. He was taken into custody on misdemeanor charges of resisting arrest and resisting an officer without arrest. Jason Bourne, that's the best you can come up with? Like, like what? Captain Marvel? Thor? They were all kind of out of place? Hmm. Yeah. Oh. And the guy looks pretty normal in his mugshot. Eyes are a little bloodshot, probably from the blood alcohol level. Blonde hair. Needs a shave. Looks like he's had better days. But what do you do? He's Jason Bourne. (sighs) Finally tonight, we're getting out of Florida, but this is like a Florida story. But we're going over to Bedford County, Virginia, where prosecutors said an argument over which truck manufacturer was better led to a fight that left three people shot. I don't know why I'm laughing. Your Ford is horrible, found on road dead. Oh, yeah, this is a debate. This is the lifelong North American debate between men and women. The Bedford County Sheriff's Office said 56-year-old Mark Edwin Turner was charged with felony malicious wounding, use of a firearm in the commission of a felony, and possession of a firearm by a felon. This comes after a 911 call around 1130 on April 22nd reporting gunshots. So, of course, the police are going to arrive, and they were blocked off the roads at Mob Creek Road and Moneta Road. You know, they got to make it safe first. Well, what they found out was three people had gunshot wounds outside of the residence, all light, non-life-threatening injuries, thank goodness. Bedford County Commonwealth's attorney, Wes Nance, said Turner, his girlfriend, her son, and her son's girlfriend were having a pre-Easter dinner at their home. Oh, how nice. Then Nance said the four were in the front yard when an argument started between Turner and his girlfriend's son about if Chevy or Ford is a better car manufacturer. During the argument, Nance said Turner pulled out a knife and his girlfriend tried to get in between the two. They said she was stabbed in the lower back by Turner, leaving a six-inch wound. That doesn't feel pretty good. That's got to hurt. Then Turner went into the house, came back outside with the gun, His girlfriend put herself between Turner and her son once again when Nance said Turner shot her five times in the leg. The woman's son was shot in the arm. Nance said there was an entry and exit wound. Nice clean one right there. The son's girlfriend was hit by two bullets that Nance said ricocheted. One hit her in the back and one hit her in the cheek. Oh, my goodness. That's close. Law enforcement and a tactical team were called to the home, and warrant show investigators found the three victims yelling in pain, saying they had been shot by Turner. At that time, Turner went back inside and continued to come out of the home to yell at officers. He was more agitated than before because somebody now had thrown in dodge to this argument. 
Oh, my goodness. The big three going at it in Virginia. Oh. According to search warrants, drugs were involved. No kidding. And had two victims indicating there was possible drug activity at the residence. No kidding. No kidding. Well, when police uh, brought in the search warrants, including... They took a couple of cell phones, one in the yard, one in the porch, a pistol, a wooden baseball bat, smoking device, three green plants, and drug paraphernalia. Nance said Turner isn't facing any charges right now for the bullets ricocheted and hit the son's girlfriend, but that could change as he faces more charges. Wow. Who knew? Maybe this is why so many people are turning to import vehicles. Thought of the day happens every night at this time where we post a question on our Facebook and Twitter pages and read your responses on the air because we love the audience participation around here. Today's thought of the day is as follows. Do you think the paranormal has an influence on entertainment, such as movies, television, or music? Let's start off with the duck. Jim Mallard from the Mallard Report. He says, yes, Dave. The paranormal has created enough content for an entire television network. Matthew. If nothing else, it's given us some colorful wrestling characters such as Papa Shango, The Undertaker, Paul Bearer. Come on, how do you leave out Kane on that one? And you can't talk wrestling without talking about the legendary Iron Sheik. Iran, number one. Russia, number one. Come on, you can't do that. Can't do that. Let me tell you something, brother. That's to Rich Giordano right there. Susan Shepard, former guest on this show. Yes, I'm sure you've seen characters in comics, novels, and movies, such as Slender Man and even Men in Black appearing on our consciousness. That's a good point. I forgot about the Men in Black movies. Richard, who's a paranormal investigator in the Canadian province of Ontario, he says paranormal research drives television and film. The evidence is dozens of paranormal reality shows and many films based on books and stories from the field over the last 15 years. Alfred, he says, of course. He goes, Dave, it's because the unknown and horror sell. Money talks, BS walks, and the paranormal is big money. I would agree with that. I would totally agree with that. People love getting scared. Don't know why, but they do. Tim, of course they do, Dave. Television, movies, added a video contact since the early 1900s. Silent films like Nostrafaru. I think he meant Nostrafu. Talkies, like the day the earth stood still. The thing in the 1950s, books, like H.G. Wells, and so many more. William. Well, certainly it had an influence on History Channel's Project Blue Book. Unfortunately, paranormal-themed or UFO-specific programming always strays from the facts and has storylines which detract from the central premise of the series. Barry Taff, who's going to be a guest on this show June 6th. In my lifetime alone there's been dozens of paranormally themed films and television shows definitely an influence oh the bad man chris zuger history ancient aliens channel yeah it does gabe it always has been a major influence in the media ozzy rob how's tomorrow looking he says yes Great expansion there, Ozzy Rob. Great expansion. Russ, it needs more. There's not enough good sci-fi anymore. I would agree with that. I think we rely too much on CGI rather than good old props. Carol, why is it that sci-fi is sexy and the paranormal is generally considered weird? 
Well, I don't know. I really don't know. Michael says, we're going to end it right here. Maybe it's just the other way around. Interesting thought. Thought of the day happens every day at this time. And, of course, we say thank you to our news director, Captain Shirk, for putting our news together for the SOR News Wire, which can be found right now on our Facebook page while we're rebuilding our website. You can go to SOR News Wire on Facebook. We'd really appreciate you giving that a like. All our news brought to you by Paranoia Magazine as well. Big thank you tonight to Ian Holt for coming on in, talking a little bit of Lorraine Warren, Ghost Hunters, Paranormal Television, the Avenger Endgames movie, and a heck of a lot more. We always like Ian on this show. He'll be back on the birthday show May 24th. He'll be 47. I'll be 46. But we'll have a good time nonetheless. We're going to try and bring somebody special in there. We'll see how it goes. Tomorrow night of the program, oh, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a very good one. Tom Whitmore, financial officer for MUFON, he's been on before. We're going to have him back. He loves researching Majestic 12. We're going to get deep into that government conspiracy tomorrow night. 9.06 Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern at SpacedOutRadio.com. We got Mr. Ron Bumblefoot Thaw rocking in the background with Little Brother is Watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio, rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. Special thanks to everybody listening in at home, at work, in your cars, in our chat rooms, on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio, wherever you may be. Remember, this show is copyright by Spaced Out Radio and SOR Media Ventures Limited. Thank you for listening in, telling your friends, doing your part to make us bigger and better every single night. Because together, my friends, we own the night. I will talk to you in 21 hours from now. Mr. Bumblefoot, we need a favor. We need you to take us home. We're watching. Have a great night, everybody. I look forward to hanging out with all of you tomorrow night. Let's do it all again, shall we? Good night.